ACMI productions are only made possible with your support. Visit patreon.com slash ACMI to learn how you can help. So it is 7.38 p.m. on Tuesday, June 25th, 2024. Good evening. My name is Christian Klein. I'm the chair of the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals. I apologize for the late start this evening. Um, I am calling this meeting of the board to order. I would first like to confirm that all members and anticipated officials are present. Uh, so members of the Zoning Board of Appeals, uh, Roger DuPont. Here. Patrick Hanlon. Here. Uh, Elaine Hoffman. Here. And Adam LeBlanc. Here. Thank you all. I will note that Daniel Riccadelli and Vedka Holy are not with us this evening. Uh, Mr. Riccadelli may be able to join us later on. Um, joining us on behalf of the town, we have Colleen Ralston, our zoning assistant. Here. And uh, then for the hearings that are scheduled for this evening, appearing for docket 3787, 84 Hillside Road, we have Mei Cheng and Alan Ching. Good to have you with us again. Um, appearing for so docket, uh, docket 3796, uh, 49th Valentine Road, um, Brian and Elizabeth Crowley. I don't know if they're going to join us this evening. Okay. Uh, for 296 Washington Street, uh, Shay Cronin and Amy Farrell. We're here. Great. Good to have you with us. Uh, for docket 370, uh, excuse me, 380340 Sutherland Road with Ever Edward and Ramona Pompeo. Saw the name in the window earlier. Da I see their name here. Uh, appearing for docket 3804-322 Mystic Street. We have uh, representative from RJJ Properties. Okay. And appearing for docket 3805-232 Massachusetts Avenue. Uh, Lisa Cronin, they may not be here. Okay. Hello. Um, I, I'm Lisa Cronin's son, and... We were talking with our tenant and they had informed us that they had reached out about being on the July 9th docket instead of the docket for tonight. Yes, exactly. We're going to, we will be voting to continue that hearing. Oh, okay. Sounds good. Thank you. Yeah. So this open meeting of the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals is being conducted remotely, consistent with an act making appropriations for the fiscal year 2023 to provide for supplementing certain existing appropriations and for certain other activities and projects signed into law on March 29th, 2023. This act includes an extension until March 31st, 2025, the remote, remote meeting provisions of Governor Baker's March 12th, 2020 executive order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law which suspended the requirement to hold all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. Public bodies may continue holding meetings remotely without a quorum of the public body physically present at a meeting location, so long as they provide adequate alternative access to remote meetings. Public bodies may meet remotely, so long as reasonable public access is afforded so the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. An opportunity for public participation will be provided during the public comment period during each public hearing. For this meeting, the Zoning Board of Appeals has convened a video conference via the Zoom application with online and telephone access as listed on the agenda posted to the town's website identifying how the public may join. This meeting is being recorded and it will be broadcast by ACMI. Please be aware that attendees are participating by a variety of means. Some attendees are participating by video conference, others are participating by computer audio or by telephone. Accordingly, please be aware that other folks may be able to see you, your screen name or another identifier. Please take care to not share personal information. Anything you broadcast may be captured by the recording. We ask that you please maintain decorum during the meeting, including displaying an appropriate background. All supporting materials that have been provided members of this body are available on the town's website unless otherwise noted. The public is encouraged to follow along using the posted agenda. And as chair, I reserve the right to take items out of order in the interest of promoting an orderly meeting. As the board will be taking up new business at this meeting, as chair, I make the following land acknowledgement. Whereas the Zoning Board of Appeals for the Town of Arlington, Massachusetts, discusses and arbitrates the use of land in Arlington, formerly known as Monotomy, an Algonquin word meaning swift waters, the board hereby acknowledges that the Town of Arlington is located on the ancestral lands of the Massachusetts tribe, the tribe of indigenous peoples from whom the colony, province, and commonwealth have taken their names. 
We pay our respects to the ancestral bloodline of the Massachusetts tribe and their descendants who still inhabit historic Massachusetts territories today. Uh, so I'd like to just start the meeting with a quick note. Uh, so starting with this meeting, the board will be changing the way it conducts its votes in order to more closely align with the requirements of the Massachusetts General Law Chapter 40A. At the end of the discussion of each individual hearing, the board will vote to either continue the public hearing to a specific date to continue receiving testimony on a matter, or the board will vote to close the public hearing, ending the receipt of new testimony. The board will then proceed to the next item on the agenda. Over the coming days, the board will prepare a draft decision based on the testimony received and the discussions that took place during the public hearing. And that discussion, that decision, excuse me, will be voted on at the next available meeting of the board. In practical terms, for those hearings before the board this evening, there will not be an official vote for or against your projects this evening. That vote will take place at our next available meeting when we have a draft decision to review and upon which our vote will rest. This does not change the schedule from what the way that we have previously issued decisions. Um, it just clarifies that the initial vote um, is just a vote to close and not an official vote on the matter. Uh, so with that, um, we do not have administrative items this evening, so we'll be proceeding straight to uh, public hearings. Uh, before opening tonight's meeting for the public hearings, here are some ground rules for effective and clear conduct of tonight's business. After I announce each agenda item, I will ask the applicant to introduce himself or themselves and make their presentation to the board. I will then request that members of the board ask what questions they have on the proposal. After the board's questions have been answered, I will open the meeting for public comment. At the conclusion of public comment, the board will deliberate and vote to either continue or close the public hearing. All votes will be conducted by a roll call vote. The final vote on any matter before the board will be taken at a subsequent meeting once the written decision has been drafted and provided to the board. The decision will then be filed with the town clerk starting the 20-day appeal period under state law. After that time, the applicant may proceed with their building permit. However, under state law, no decision granted by this board shall take effect until a certified copy of the final decision has been filed with and recorded at the Middlesex South Registry of Deeds in Cambridge by the applicant. So with that, um, we move on to the public hearings. Um, I will be first taking up uh, docket 3796 49 Valentine Road. Uh, the board has received a written request by the applicant to withdraw their application for a special permit. Um, and so I will, the chair will take a motion to approve the request to withdraw the special permit application for 49 Valentine Road. So moved to Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Hanlon. Second. Thank you, Mr. DuPont. So vote of the board to approve the request to withdraw the special permit for 49 Valentine Road. Uh, Mr. DuPont. Uh, aye. Mr. Hanlon. Aye. Ms. Hoffman. Aye. Mr. LeBlanc. Aye. And the chair votes aye. That motion is passed. That brings us uh, to item seven on our agenda, item uh, docket 3805, 232 Massachusetts Avenue. Uh, the applicants contacted the board and indicated they were unable to um, have rep legal representation present this evening, and they have requested a continuance. Um, uh, Colleen, what date are they requesting a continuance to? They would like July 9th. Okay. So the chair will take a motion to approve the request for a continuance for the variance application for 232 Massachusetts Avenue until Tuesday, July 9th, 2024 at 7.30 p.m. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Thank Second. you, Tim. Thank you, Mr. DuPont. So vote of the board uh, to continue the application, the hearing for 232 Mass Ave. Uh, Mr. DuPont. Aye. Mr. Hanlon. Aye. Ms. Hoffman. Aye. Mr. LeBlanc. Aye. And the chair votes aye. That matter is closed um, or continued. And with that, we'll return to the top of our docket. Uh, so docket 378784 Hillside Avenue. Uh, so if I could ask the applicants to unmute themselves and tell us what they would like to do. And I understand they have submitted a revised site plan, which I will go ahead and bring up. Wait a second. Yeah. 
And here we go. Mr. Chang, Mr. Chang? Yes. yes. Uh, can you hear me? We can, yes, thank you. Yes, uh, uh, this is May. Um, uh, after the first meeting, uh, we went to the town, met with the building inspector. They have helped us to draw, um, uh, update the, uh, uh, the new plans to follow the bylaw. So, um, so this is the new update. Uh plan from the, uh, the town inspector for us I um so we will we, this time we we'll definitely like follow what they have suggest us to do and then um we hope that the board will um up, uh, approve our new plan um to solve our uh hacking issue thank you so much thank you um just to remind the board, uh, the applicant had been with us, um, I believe a month ago, and they had a, a driveway had been created on the Hillside Avenue side uh, within the front yard setback. And so um, they were had come before the board requesting a special permit to allow it as a second driveway. Uh, the board could not accept it because it did not meet the requirements of the zoning bylaw. Um, and at the meeting, we had discussed some options that they could pursue that would allow them to um, at least provide an application that met the requirements uh, so that the board could then uh, discuss the matter. So the plan that you see here was um, prepared with uh, the assistance of inspectional services. Um, it shows a nine by 18 parking space beyond the front line of the house facing Hillside Avenue. Um, and so it meets the front yard requirements for Hillside, and it is also greater than 25 feet from Florence Avenue, so it meets the front yard requirements for Florence Avenue as well. So that 9 by 18 space is a legitimate parking space, um, and then there is a driveway leading to it. Um, so my, my question for the applicant, so um, first, so the, it appears that the driveway is designed so that there could be um, possibly two cars uh, side by side in the driveway. Um, my understanding had been that there was a specific reason for requesting um, an addition, one additional parking space. I wasn't sure why you were seeking two additional parking spaces when you already have a garage and driveway. Oh, um, for the um, for the for the parking and uh, a garage, uh, mm -hmm. we pretty. We we are two family, um, two family houses. So um, if we not if we park for ourselves, we won't have uh enough space for the tenants to park. And then because we don't know we don't know until we move in the, um, the Arlington doesn't have overnight parking. So, mm -hmm. and then uh, we, we find out it, it would be the very big issue for us if if um, if we cannot provide the uh, parking for tenants. We don't know how to solve the problem. Mm -hmm. oh, this is, yeah, this is, and then also our parents will, mm -hmm. like, if they, if they come, they, um, if they stay with us for, and then we don't have, even not enough space either, but we will uh, compromise ourselves that way, and then the other way we can just give it to give it to the tenants. If like if at least I think uh, one family, they at least would be have two cars or three cars. So I don't know how to solve the problem if mm. we don't have the uh, in, in, income. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so your intention is to keep the existing garage and driveway that's on Florence Avenue. Yeah, yes, okay. yes, yes, um, yes. So it, it right, will so be that... like for our, 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 our side and then hopefully and then the fund then we can give it to the tenants and then then um, I think no parking for them I don't think we can run it out. 
and then okay. and then my husband had no job, so we need to just went it out for to support us too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. So there's three parking spaces: two in the garage, one in uh, this nine by eighteen area, and then we have two driveways that are uh, two cars wide. Um, effectively, is what we have on the plan. Okay. Um, are there any questions from the board? Can you hear, Mr. Chairman? Mr. Hamlin. Um, so when I looked this up on the GIS, this is an R1 in the R1 district, isn't it? Am I wrong about that? I am looking at the application. Which I said is not showing up on the application. Um, I just quickly need to check the town. Uh, Mr. Chair. Yes. I believe that this property is in the R1 district. Within the R1. Yeah, based on the um, zoning map. Okay. <laughs> So what I'm a little bit, what I'd like to have a little more explanation about is we, we've had, a, the application itself says that there are three dwelling units in it, which I'm guessing is probably a mistake. Um, but we've talked here in so far about three, at least two different tenants plus the applicants. And I'm just wondering how this is actually laid out. Is this genuinely a house that has more than one dwelling unit in it? Or are, are rooms being let out? Um, it, obviously, there's a considerable amount of parking pressure that is being created by having by by you know tenants and the and the residents themselves. And I'm a little bit unclear as to why it is we have all these tenants. Ms. Ching, how many units are in the building presently? Two. 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 Okay. Mm-hmm. So the application says three. So we, that's why we wanted to confirm. Two. Mm-hmm. It is just two. So if this is R1, why is there two? Is this prior nonconforming use or? I'm a little, I don't, I'm, I'm not sure I understand what the. Mm-hmm what the legal setup is. So that may be more of a question for um, uh, for inspectional services. Um, I don't know the specific history as to why um, there are two units existing. Um, the number of the Assessor's report indicates there's two units. Um, so certainly that's a that may very well be a pre-existing um, use on that property. Certainly the other buildings. Um, on that corner all appear to just be a uh, single family. Right. Well, I gather, Mr. Chairman, we have the chat open and I've and at least one one of the people has been providing helpful information. But I, 
we we're going to have public comment and, and probably for the purpose of the record, since we don't usually use the chat and it's not doesn't becoming a part of the record, probably things like that ought to be dealt with publicly by yeah, participating in the public in the public participation that we'll get to mm -hmm. in shortly. So can I add, I, there's in the application, there is a reference to elderly people who consider the entrance that the, that the applicants are talking about the, the hillside driveway to be safer. Uh, are those people who, are those the, your parents that you were talking about who might at some point come move in with you or is there uh, somebody who's already there and who is oh, oh, my, my parents my, my parents will be they come to watch all my uh to take care of my kids while i'm i'm working too i see so they visit each day basically uh not each day but at least three uh three days i see and do they live there during overnight or do they yes yes the yeah they, they, they were overnight too yes Yes. Okay. And in looking at the, I'm having a hard time understanding where the safety issue is. If you could explain oh, sure, sure. why it is they feel that it's unsafe. It doesn't look very unsafe. Um, the safety when we, um, um, the, the, the safety would be like, um, if, uh, or, or are we planning that, um, because like, um, um uh, my husband truck if they the, the the thunder the truck if they or i can switch um so i mean if we have the other side my my husband truck also can move to the the uh, uh, hill size so when we come out uh, during the busy time uh, during the school days in the morning um uh, if we drop off our kids then would be like more just safer to come out because always the street on oh, foreign yeah. street would be like so super uh super busy during seven thirty to uh, uh during the school school hour seven thirty to to around eight eight thirty. So if if we come out from the uh the hill size, there's a two stop sign so that we can come uh the, the big they can see us, the student also can see um uh, won't be like block them because the the children's really like like a uh young i think the trust would be uh more like uh, difficult to see for the eye level but for my own car it would be easier because i'm 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 it's much smaller to to come out so for my car it would be easier to for, uh, no problem to come out either size yes yeah mm -hmm. But usually for the peak time is from morning and after school that that kind of hours the foreign street would be very very uh, like busy street for the students mm -hmm. for i mean for the uh, yes yes for the children yes mm -hmm. mr chairman that's all i have for now thanks mr hamlin are there other questions from members of the board Mr. Chair. Mr. LeBlanc? Um, one question I still had or a comment was, I'm not uh, convinced about the 20-foot the width of the driveway. Um, I, I think it's just adding a front yard parking spot there. And that was kind of our point of contention at our last meeting about this. Um, so if this was something that we would consider, I would um, propose that, you know, we restrict the width of the driveway. Uh, that leads to the parking spot. So that way it doesn't invite the kind of additional quote unquote parking spot um, that's in the driveway. Yeah. Great, thank you. Anything else from the board? Seeing none. Um, I'm now going to be opening the meeting for public comment.
Public questions and comments will be taken as they relate to the matter at hand and should be directed to the board for the purpose of informing its decision. Members of the public will be granted time to ask questions and make comments. Members of the public who wish to speak should digitally raise their hand using the button on the reactions tab in the Zoom application. Those calling in by phone, please dial star nine to indicate you would like to speak. You'll be called upon by the chair. You'll be asked to give your name and address for the record, and you'll be given time for your questions and comments. All questions are to be addressed through the chair. Please remember to speak clearly. For anyone wishing to address the board a second time during any particular hearing, the chair will allow those wishing to speak for the first time to be called upon first. And once all questions and comments have been addressed or an allocated time has ended, the public comment period shall be closed. And the chair and staff will do our best to show any documents being discussed. So with that, are there any members of the public who wish to uh, address the board in regards to 84 Hillside Avenue? Uh, have uh, Mr. Grant Cook. Hi, Grant Cook. Can you hear me? We can, sir. Yeah, just uh, 16 Walson Ave. Um, just commenting on your earlier discussion, I was the one chatting. Yeah, there's two families all over the Down District. 45 Hillside, the two family as well. So although it is a single family area, there's plenty of two families that must predate the zoning or something. So that's all I had to say. Thank you. Thank you. Are there... Any other members of the public who wish to address this hearing? Once going twice. Seeing none, I will go ahead and close the public comment period uh, for this specific hearing. Uh, board will now discuss um, findings and either vote to close the hearing or recommend a continuance. So what the board has before it is a request for a, a second driveway, which the board is allowed to approve uh, by a special permit under section 6110A. Uh, the board does, in addition to the special permit findings, the board is required to make three additional findings. Uh, one is that the second driveway may be added in a manner that avoids an undue concentration of population. The second is that a second driveway may be added in a manner that allows adequate provision of transportation. And the third is that a second driveway may be added in a manner that conserves the value of land and buildings in the vicinity. Um, so in, in reviewing this application, so the existing garage and driveway facing Florence Avenue, um, it's two parking spaces, but it can accommodate four cars because there could be two cars in the garage and two cars in the, in the, the driveway leading to the garage. Um, and then the request is for an additional driveway which provide adds one parking space but provides three spaces for cars to be off street overnight uh so that would be a total of seven cars that could be accommodated on this site which um to me feels like a very high number even for a, a two-family house um and i um and i particularly appreciate mr leblanc's um question about the the width on the driveway um that's really something the board can consider the board can also consider um some form of screening to make sure to try to minimize the the visibility of anything um should the board move to to approve um Ms. ching yes um uh since um uh the garage, the, the garage i think the old old build the garage is not fit to our, 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 uh, our the truck, truck. Mm -hmm. small. too too small, and yep. then also the uh our 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 Toyota the the the, the, the big van van also cannot mm -hmm. go in either. So those yes, two, I think they built in the old time is is very small. We cannot. The SUV cannot as as we we have since we mm -hmm. have a family the SUV cannot fit in the garage the, the garage yeah mm -hmm. so okay. we always park outside too yeah yeah I mean part of the driveways too yeah mm -hmm. but it would but with a different vehicle it would be possible to occupy the garage with a car uh yeah for the small one I think yeah. for the yeah, for this yeah, we have but, yeah, 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 but now yeah. people always try the SUV. Yeah, yeah, because we, we have a big family here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Um, so I'm curious what the board thinks about um, the particular findings that we need to make in regards to section 3110A. Um, especially, I don't, and the, so one question that sort of sticks in my mind is this is an R1 district, but it, it is a two family house. So there is already sort of additional um, residential use on this property. And one of the findings that we need to make is that the driveway can be added in a manner that avoids an undue concentration of population. Um, I would just ask the members of the board sort of what they feel about that particular um, finding. Uh, the other two findings are a little more straightforward, um, that it can be added in a in a manner that allows for adequate provision of transportation, um, and then uh, it can be added in a manner that conserves the value of the land and buildings is something that we could address. Um, so I'm curious what other members of the board feel about this um, finding we need to make about an undue concentration of population. Mr. Chairman. Mr. DuPont. So I guess I'm a little bit unclear as to how to interpret that phrasing. I mean, your comment was that it would be seven spaces in total with the four on Florence and then the additional three on Hillside. And do you think that the reference to the undue concentration of population has to do with the fact that there would be three more spaces permitted? I'm not sure how that equates to population. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's not a, a, straight, a straight line for me from that to there. However, I just remember a couple of things from the last meeting. One was the concern, you know, to what extent it's, you know, it is, um, you know, a serious concern was about the fact that, you know, there were people, um, if people were parking in the driveway on Florence, that there were a lot of, uh, there's a lot of foot traffic with students coming up and down the sidewalk. And so, you know, there was that part of it. And I thought that, you know, part of the rationale at the time was that it would alleviate some of the use of that space on Florence. Um, and then the second thing that I think that we talked about, and I realized that this has been revamped somewhat, was, you know, how close to the intersection of Hillside and uh, Florence was that original proposal, right? Because it was mm -hmm over in the corner, has that changed to substantially, Mr. Chairman, in terms of the location of the, what we talked of as a pad, I believe? And then is this now being moved down hillside further? So this will be further from the corner. Um, the currently, um, I think the pad is over 20 feet wide um and does not come all the way over to the house it's a little more isolated in the yard um i don't know the exact dimension it is off the corner of the property um the proposal here with a 20-foot driveway um is that there would be 14 feet from the edge of the driveway or uh 12 feet from the corner of the curb to the corner And if the driveway was held at nine feet, then it would be 11 feet farther from the curb, from the corner. As opposed to the 20? Yeah. So just a straight shot, nine feet in width all the way to the street, as opposed to having it expanded? Correct. That would um, provide for 25 feet from the side of the driveway to the corner, possibly a little bit more because the site is slightly trapezoidal. And that would Chairman, could I just interrupt for a second? It, it would be helpful for those of us who are trying to follow this oh. conversation if you could put the the plot plan on the screen. Absolutely. Apologize for that. There we are. So, Mr. Chairman, what you were just describing is effectively extending that 18-foot line straight down to the street 
and eliminating that additional width where it's just 20 feet. Correct. So if this was maintained as a single width, car width wide, yeah. um, then there would be 25 feet to the corner plus whatever amount of space there is past the edge of the property to the to the um, curb. So that that just that just results in two spaces on the hillside and then still four on uh, Florence. That is correct. Okay. For a two family house. Right. Where the requirements are just one space per unit, correct? Correct. Right. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hanlon? Um, I feel a little bit uncomfortable about relying on, it seems to me that in substance, there are a lot of cars here. And when we d discussed why it is we needed a lot of cars, it was, as May said, I think there are a lot of people here. And it's I don't necessarily think it's our place to be dis discouraging the people. Um, but I am concerned about the cars, and I'm concerned about the impact of that many cars if those spaces are actually being used, uh, the effect that that has, maybe not so much on the property values nearby, but when we get to the section 3.3.3 to its, consistent, we, its consistency with the zoning district. And as the chair pointed out, the zoning district is R1. So already you're dealing with a non-conforming use in a higher density than is the typical density. And then you're accommodating it through what I think is a large number of parking spaces, even for a two family. And I feel pretty sympathetic to Mr. Blank's, LeBlanc's point of view that if we were ready to, to do this, um, that we would be better off having a normally sized driveway uh, uh, with only two parking spaces allotted to it on the hillside side. That that should be enough. That's already more than is typical for a, for a, a dwelling unit or a dwelling this size. And uh, I would put it really on on three point three point three f rather than on the concentration here. But in substance, it's a similar point. So reviewing the findings then the board needs to make. Uh, so the first finding would be that the second driveway may be added in a manner that avoids an undue concentration of population. Um, I think several members have spoken to um, narrowing the proposed driveway from 20 feet at the curb to being nine feet for its entire length. Um, that would still allow the applicant to have two cars um, at that driveway. And uh, they would still be able to park additional vehicles in their existing driveway uh, down the street. Um, and having two cars, one after the other, is a fairly typical pattern for uh, Arlington in general and um, and in this neighborhood as well. Um, and as it was, was pointed out by Mr. Hanlon, this is a two-family house in a single-family district, so it is a non-conforming use. Um, but the board has heard applicants in the past uh, requesting a second driveway for a two-family in order to uh, facilitate the usage of the two-family. Some of those have been approved, some have not. Um, but allowing for uh, the parking of appropriate vehicles uh, for the two units um, would not be increasing the concentration of population on the site. Um, 
The second is that the second driveway may be added in a manner that allows for adequate provision of transportation. Um, so there would adding the second driveway would there would certainly be adequate transportation uh, to and from the building. Um, we would not be restricting them to anything below uh, what is already um, what is allowed under the code. And uh, the second driveway may be added in a manner that conserves the value of land and buildings in the vicinity. Um, so this one I'm a little more concerned about because um, currently it is a large open uh, yard and the addition of the driveway will uh, basically have cars parking in the yard, which even though it's not technically correct, it's what it appears like. Um, so when the when it comes time to discuss conditions, um, I think it would be appropriate for the board to discuss if there are conditions um, that could be imposed in regards to landscaping and buffering uh, that would minimize the appearance of the driveway and um, assist in maintaining and conserving the value of the land um, and the property on adjacent the. Uh, excuse me, the value of landed buildings in the vicinity. Um, and then, so those are the special findings in regards to uh, a second driveway, but then the general findings that need to be uh, found by the board. The first is that the adverse effects of the proposed use will not outweigh its beneficial impacts. Um, so the board would need to find that the addition of uh, the driveway on Hillside would not um, be more detrimental to the neighborhood um, than the condition without a driveway um, on that in that area. Um, board would need to find that the requested use is allowed or allowed by special permit in the district, which which it is a special permit under six one ten a. Uh, the third is that the requested use is essential or desirable to the public convenience or welfare. Um, in general, allowing uh, homeowners to um, enjoy their property um, in a manner befitting them is a general good. Um, as the applicants have stated, the garage itself was designed when cars were very different than they are today. Um, and it is difficult to utilize the garage. Um, they do have a paved driveway in front of that garage, which they may be able to park vehicles in. Um, but having a driveway off of Hillside Avenue that is uh, with spaces that are large enough to accommodate uh, the larger vehicles that are more typical in, in Arlington today um, may be appropriate in this situation. Uh, the requested use will not create undue traffic congestion or impair pedestrian safety. Uh, as the applicant has stated, one of the primary reasons they are requesting this change is to actually improve pedestrian safety. Uh, they have a lot of concerns about uh, the traffic on Florence Avenue, particularly uh, traffic heading towards uh, the nearby school, which includes uh, students who are going along the sidewalk. Uh, this would move the vehicles from that uh, more busy condition to being on Hillside Avenue, which um, has far less pedestrian traffic um, than Florence Avenue does. Um, next is why the requested use will not overload any public systems. Um, so the creation of this driveway uh, will require review by the um, engineering division should it be approved uh, because of the size of um, the additional asphalt, that, that, excuse me, not the additional asphalt, the additional driveway that is being proposed. Um, and so that can be alleviated by requesting that rather than the driveway being uh, made impervious that um, the board could condition that the, if the driveway was to be paved impervious, that that may be something the board could request by um, condition. Um, otherwise, there's no other public systems that would be um, impacted. How special regulations for the requested use are fulfilled. Those were those three findings that we discussed earlier. Uh, why the requested use will not impair the character or integrity of the district. Um, so this is 
the one of the bigger ones. Um, I think for me, the big issue has to do with uh, if the board is to allow this driveway that it be adequately screened from Florence Avenue um, and that that landscaping um, be of sufficient depth and height um, as is appropriate for the, the, the vehicles that would be parked there because there is already um, vehicle parking on Florence Avenue uh, for this property. Um, uh, then there's the requested use will not be detrimental to the public health or welfare. Um, having a driveway uh, should not impact the health or welfare um, beyond the uh, what is already impacting the health and welfare of the district, which is the, the, the existence of the cars and the, um, the subsequent environmental and um, impacts that such would brings with it. And then the last is why the requested use will not cause excess of use detrimental to the neighborhood. Um, and as Mr. Hanlon sort of noted, this is sort of the crux of this is will the will the addition of um, these additional parking spaces on Hillside Avenue, will that cause an excess of accessory parking, which would be detrimental to the neighborhood? Um, so these are the findings the board needs to make. Um, and then so the board I uh, believe that those findings have been met. Um, there are specific conditions. So, but I would first uh, ask members of the board um, what they feel about those findings and if they they believe that the application before us um, would allow us to make those findings. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hanlon. I think that the I mean, the, the, the big finding we're supposed to make is whether the benefits of the application outweigh the disadvantages. This And that sort of is at the heading of Section 3.3.3. And I'm a little skeptical about the alleged advantages, but certainly they are important for the objectives of the applicant. Uh, and to some extent, as the chair pointed out, they're uh, helpful in basically taking a house that that it was not constructed for modern conditions and making them more adequate uh, going forward. And that is uh, and that is something that we have in the past thought of as a sufficient public benefit. Um, to me, that weighs relatively lightly, uh, and I feel that it would be outweighed by going forward, even with screening, uh, with as many parking spaces as are proposed. Uh, and consequently, I think that we need to have a condition uh, such as the one suggested by Mr. LeBlanc uh, that limits the width of the, uh, of the hillside parking space that will have the advantage of avoiding uh, as many cars there. It, it won't look like a great big yard with a zillion cars in it, which is something that is widely thought of as being an unattractive thing in a community such as ours. And it also, if there is any kind of an issue with being too close to, with, with of, of having sufficient offset from Florence to make sure you have sight distances and so forth, uh, we've often found that that uh, even in the provision of adequate transportation, that that sort of thing is a consideration. And if it's a consideration here, as somebody as people have raised, it would be more easily met by reducing the width of the parking space uh, in the way that Mr. LeBlanc has suggested. So, for me, the key thing is I mean, I'm all in favor of the screening and so forth, but for me, the key thing is to relieve somewhat what I think of as on the negative side of the scale by by uh, conditioning it in accordance to Mr. LeBlanc's suggestion. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Dubont. So I just wanted to sort of visit a couple of sections of the bylaw and I, I believe that when we talk about screening, you know, we have to look at visibility in 5.3.12. Uh, 
And if I read that correctly, and tell me if somehow I've got this wrong, um, it seems to me like um, it seems to me like there's also a limitation on the height of any screening to two and a half feet, uh, if I'm not mistaken. I think that's only within five feet of the curb. Um, yeah, let me. 5.3.1.2. I was just trying to read that quickly. Um, so it says, um, no structure of vegetation shall be um, over two and a half feet above the adjacent ground within five feet. So you're right about that part of it, but that's just a consideration that has to be um, you know, has to be respected as far as if anybody plants anything. Mm -hmm. So there's that. And then the other question I had um, has to do with um, 6.1.11 C7, which is just the requirement that, um, um, I'm trying to get the language here, if you bear with me just a minute. Um, with the distance from the curb, from the intersecting street. And I, I just wanna make sure that I understand that correctly and that that also is being observed. So that's 6.1.11 C7. And it says any portion or entrance um, or exit of a driveway shall not be closer than 50 feet to the curb line of an intersecting street. Ooh, and okay. I, I wanted to know based upon the drawing that we have, um, first of all, is that something that we need to make sure it is observed? And if so, is that something that is met by the um, proposal here, even if it is reduced to, you know, nine feet going all the way to the street? So, so that's my question. Does this work? Does this 50 feet work and is it applicable? You said that's six one eleven um, C seven. Six one eleven. So say parking and loading space standards. Any portion of the So C all parking and loading areas containing over five spaces. So this is actually this is this is just this only applies to parking areas containing over five spaces. All right. Um, thanks for that, because I was not sure. Oh, OK. Yeah, see. OK. Uh, thank you. Never mind. No. Nope. Um. I'm just jotting down conditions here as they were spoken. Mr. Chair. Ms. Hoffman. Um, um I I agree with the comments about narrowing it to not from 20 to 9, as we've been talking about quite a lot. Um and it that's a reduction of an existing condition at this point. Is that right? Like the new driveway already exists? So the, they put down an asphalt pad, um, but it is a, it, it was not done to the, uh, it was not done with a special permit. So therefore it's not legitimate construction. Right, right. Okay. So some of what we're talking about is an extension of what exists and some of it is a removal. So where this would be, it does overlap somewhat, I think, where that pad is today.
Mr. Chairman? Yes, Mr. Hanley. Um, I'm trying to, there, at one point there was a discussion of, uh, I think the chair mentioned asking for impervious, excuse me, for pervious pavement, right? It's yeah. impervious now. Um, and I'm wondering whether as a practical matter, no matter what we do, the existing pad is going to have to be removed and replaced by something else. Or whether we're talking about a situation where they're going to be trying to preserve as much of what they already have as possible, because the degree of burden of going to a, a pervious surface is very different if it means that they can't use anything of what they have now. But if they're going to have to remove that anyway, uh, then it's it's more attractive as something to be kept in mind. Mm -hmm. So should the... just, just to have said it clearly is that, you know, we, we, we've been talking about the cars, but I'm concerned that there's a lot of asphalt that's implied in this plan. And yes. that itself has got a negative effect on the community. Uh, okay, so should the board uh, be inclined to make the required findings? Um, there are several conditions, uh, both standard and uh, specific, that I think the board should consider. Um, the first would of the standard conditions is that the plans and specifications approved by the board for the special permit shall be the final plans and specifications submitted to the building inspector of the town of Arlington in connection with this application for zoning relief. There shall be no deviation during construction from approved plans and specifications without the express written approval of the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, the second is that the building inspectors hereby notify there to monitor the site and should proceed with appropriate enforcement procedures at any time they determine that violations are present. Building inspectors shall proceed under section 3.1 of the zoning bylaw and under the provisions of chapter 40, section 21D of the Massachusetts general laws and institute non-criminal complaints if necessary. The building inspector may also approve and institute appropriate criminal action also in accordance with section 3.1. And the standard number three is that the board shall maintain continuing jurisdiction with respect to this special permit grant. Um, and then there are some additional uh, conditions that have come up um, over the course of this hearing. Um, so one would be uh, that the width of the driveway and parking space is limited to nine feet. Um, Second is that the applicant shall provide and maintain a landscaping bed on the Florence Avenue side of the driveway and parking of at least three feet depth and a height greater than four feet, except as required under the bylaw. Um, the third is that the applicant shall pave the new driveway with pervious materials. And the fourth is that the existing asphalt pad on Hillside Avenue is to be removed in its entirety and the land driveway and curb are to be restored to their original condition. Um, and then I'd been considering whether the board needs to make any statements in regards to, um, <clears throat> excuse me, um, uh, providing a final site, uh, providing a revised site plan um, because they will need to file that with the uh, Registry of Deeds. But I don't know if that's something that the board needs to necessarily put in as a condition. Um, th that is just something that the applicant would be required to do because the um, whatever decision the board makes does need to be filed with the Registry of Deeds. Um, and then the only other question I have, um, I will go one more time back to the site plan. Uh, which I have now lost. Where are you, site plan? There you are. Um, so the trees are not noted on this plan at the moment. Um, there is a tree that currently sits in approximately this position here where my cursor is. Um, but there is a second tree that's about right here. Um, and so uh, the board may want to also include um, 
a statement that the board requests the applicant work with a tree warden to address protection um, of public shade trees. Hey, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hanlon. Um, I, I guess I have one observation and one question. The observation is that if anyone wants to quickly look at it, I believe that the tree that the chair is talking about appears in one of the photographs that's in the record, and it's quite a substantial tree. Um, and and the second is, is it, I mean, I'm not sure, are we, what, what is, the, this is a, this is a public shade tree. Um, yeah. That isn't actually the place where I was looking for it. it it's one of the th one of the group of three that shows where the where the pad was put in. I think maybe the first one. But in any event, what I'm wondering is whether it's enough to say requests. Uh, requests is sort of please, and I'm not sure. Okay, that's not the substantial there. truth. This one is, uh, and I'm wondering if we if if that looks like a public. Uh, shade tree and and if it is uh wouldn't they be required by the tree bylaw to do this yeah, I mean, so we could say the yeah. board requires the applicant work with the tree warden to address protection of the right public or, shade trees. well we could say the applicant shall and then that just makes it clear that works too so the applicant shall work with the tree warden to address protection of the public shade trees. Okay. So in summary, what the board has before it, it's an application for a special permit under section 6110A of the zoning bylaw for a second driveway, which is something the board can approve. Um, by making the findings required for a special permit and three additional findings found under section 6110A. Uh, so the board has reviewed all of those findings. Um, and in order to support those findings, the board has recommended a series of three, the three standard conditions plus an additional one, two, three, four, five conditions, which, um, the five are that the applicant shall work with the tree warden to address protection of the public shade, shade trees, uh, that the width of the driveway and parking space is limited to nine feet, uh, that the applicant shall provide and maintain a landscaping bed on the Florence Avenue side of the driveway and parking space of at least three feet deep and a height greater than four feet and greater than four feet in height, except as required under the bylaw. The applicant shall pave the new driveway with pervious materials and the existing asphalt pad on Hillside Avenue is to be removed in its entirety and the land driveway and curb are to be restored to their original condition. Um, Mr. There, Chair? Mr. Hanlon. The chair had indicated a previous condition which may or may not be necessary, but I think that given the amount of confusion that can happen, particularly with respect to the requirement of filing this, that it would be helpful, even if it's only a belt and suspenders thing, to include the uh, statement uh, relating to providing a revised site plan for that can be filed with the special permit. I just encourage us to keep that sixth condition in there. Okay. Um... Mr. Chairman? One second. So that would be, condition would be the applicant is to provide a certified site plan, certified site plan indicating and dimensioning the area of the proposed driveway and parking space for filing with the registry of deeds. Okay. Mr. DuPont. So it was just the condition that we always have that work will be done in uh, accordance with the plans that are submitted and they won't deviate. Yeah. 
And, and I'm wondering if then what you're just referring to now with this revised site plan would then be the plans that would have to be followed. Because what we have with the, you know, the red lines on it is a little confused. And so we do, so in that first standard condition, uh, the second sentence is there shall be no deviation during construction from approved plans and specifications without the express written approval of the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, I am taking our additional conditions as express written approval. Okay. And then the only other question that I have is, I mean, we have the applicants coming to us with a proposal for a wider driveway, and we're essentially saying that we would not be in favor of granting that. And so I, I do think that they should have the opportunity to respond to whether or not you know, the request that they are making, if it is abridged, if they are willing to sort of live with that, uh, because we're essentially imposing that condition, but we're altering what it is that they're requesting. And I would think that they would want to say, yes, that's something we're willing to do, because if they're not, mm -hmm. <laughs> we have an issue. Certainly. So with that, I would ask that the applicants, um, so the board appears to be favorable to a single width driveway, but not to uh, the wider 20 foot width of the proposed driveway. Would that be acceptable to you? Okay. Sure. Would note that the applicant has nodded. Yes. <laughs> so, so, like, so it is a uh, Should become like a single driveway. Like, like a, like a, like a, nine, you nine, mean nine feet, nine feet right, like this, right? Like, oh, right. So that nine oh, feet would yeah, be the yeah. full. Would be yeah, the, the yeah, wouldn't yes, have yes. that wide yes, 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 okay. yes, yes. As long as we have space, it we don't need right because the right we don't understand. It mm -hmm. is the paving company they did it for us. I, I, we don't yeah. understand when they, we cannot do it, but they do it. So we, we thought we can. Uh, they told us they can. So we okay. just listen what they what they told us. Yeah. So so yes yes we are mm -hmm. we. we we will listen. We will listen. Okay. Yes. So then, what the board has before it, um, as we did the application, and we now have the three standard conditions plus one, two, three, four, five, six um, additional conditions. Um, so at this point, the board, as, as we had said before, the board is not voting to approve or. Um, Disallow the board at this point is only voting to uh, to close the hearing, and then we will be voting on the written decision at our subsequent meeting. Um, are there any members of the board who would are concerned about uh, the the proposal not meeting the findings based on the conditions we have provided? Seeing none, the chair will accept a motion to close the public hearing for docket 3787, 84 Hillside Avenue. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Second. Hanlon. And seconded by Mr. DuPont. So this is to close the public hearing for docket 3787, 84 Hillside Avenue. Uh, the decision will be written and we will be voting on this matter at our July 9th meeting. Mr. Uh, so, Mr. Hanlon? Just assuming that I, my intention on the basis of the discussion that we just had, it would be to prepare a decision for the board that did my best to reflect the discussion we've had and that would incorporate the conditions that were, uh, that were discussed. So that is the nature of the draft that the board can expect at the next hearing. Perfect. Um, so with that, then a vote of the board to close the this public hearing. Uh, Mr. DuPont? Aye. Mr. Hanlon? Aye. Uh, Ms. Hoffman? Aye. Mr. LeBlanc? Aye. Um, see, Mr. Riccadelli has joined us, um, but was not here for the entire docket. Uh, but we would ask for your vote on the uh, motion to close the public hearing. Sure. Aye. Thank you. And the chair votes on it. So that uh, 
So docket 3787 is closed. Uh, so that brings us, and I, I thank the applicant uh, for coming back to us and um, we will be having a vote on the, the final vote on the 9th of July. Uh, so with that, find my agenda. Uh, so the next item uh, you already had done. So that brings us to item four in our agenda, which is docket 3802. Uh, 296 Washington Street. So I could ask the applicants to go ahead and introduce themselves and tell us what they are proposing to do. Uh, thank you, uh, Chairperson Klein and the board members for consideration of our application. I'm Shay Cronin and I'm speaking on behalf of myself and my wife, Amy Farrell, who is also here listening in. We we we're you want me to go into the uh, the application? Yes, please. Um, do you would you like us to display the uh, the drawings? Or sure, that would be helpful. I think you know we are looking to um, you know we're invested uh, members of the Arlington community, and we are looking to expand the living space of our house so that way we can remain in it with additional ground level living space um, and ability to to um, uh, host community, you know, activity groups over our, at our, our house, including our sports teams and um, theater group that our daughter belongs with. And we are also hoping to remodel our kitchen so that way we can, it hasn't been um, updated in, in several decades and, and it's quite small and we would like to make space addition as well. Thank you. Um, so hopefully you're seeing this is the proposed site plan. Um, so this house is on the corner of Washington Street and Gay Street. Um, and the existing house here, and then the proposal is the dashed red line. Um, I would note um, the plan does not show uh, the existing trees on the site. Um, there are some rather substantial uh, trees, especially um, at the rear. I don't know if it's on the applicant's property or on the adjacent property. Uh, there's sort of a copse of maple and oak um, in this mm -hmm. area here. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, under the Arlington's bylaws, um, for a corner lot, the yards that face a street are considered front yards so boy because it's on a corner it has two front yards uh so this is the front yard for gay street this is the front yard for washington street um and then there's one side and one rear and uh, my understanding from the table is that uh, this is considered the rear yard uh the side that's facing off washington street and then the side yard is this portion of the yard here that is on uh, going up gay street uh, so that just to orient ourselves um and then uh so these are the existing the the elevations of the existing house um so it's sort of a single family house um this is facing gay street so you have the uh this is the the parking level at and entrance at the basement level and then the main house up above. Uh, this is the proposal. Um, so this is again, this is the, the Gay Street side. Um, and then the front is the side that faces onto uh, Washington Street. And then the plans. So this portion of the building is the existing footprint. Um, and this here is the proposed footprint of the addition. And again, on the main floor, um, the existing house is essentially along these lines. Um, and then the addition here sort of wrapping around. Okay. Um, so I wouldn't... So I know this is a 
Uh, this was advertised as both a special permit um, and a variance. So the special permit is under 542B6, which is a large addition. So an addition that's over 750 square feet outside of the existing foundation wall uh, requires a special permit from the board with specific findings. Um, and that's also advertised as a variance because um, it is creating some new non-conformities with the existing, uh, with the zoning bylaw. And uh, those new non-conformities need to meet a higher criteria for approval from the board. And so um, we will go ahead and sort of discuss those as we go forward. Um, so let me back out here. So the, the required, so there's a, we were in reviewing the um, the surveyor's record here, there's a little quirk in how they did things. Um, so the front yard on Washington Street, as they pointed out here, the required setback is 25 feet. Um, it appears that the existing is 27.2. Um, and they are proposing to reduce that to 23 feet, um, which is less than what's required. Um, but that will only be an open porch. Um, and an open porch is allowed to extend into a required setback. Um, so we would need to review that uh, section just to confirm that this is meeting that criteria. So this would not require a variance, but this would be allowed by right. Um, second is the front yard on Gay Street. So it's required to be 25 feet. It's existing at 26.8. Um, in this case, the addition um, is coming into the setback. Um, so 15.3 is to the open porch, but it's anticipated that this is around 17 feet. So it's a reduction of the required setback from 25 feet down to 17 feet that would require a variance under the bylaw. Um, the existing driveway um, has parking on it. Uh, they would be moving the parking closer to the street, um, which is essentially an extension of an existing nonconformity. Uh, driveways are not, uh, parking spaces are not allowed to be in the front yard setback, but that is the existing condition at, at the house. Um, and so the, this could be approved by special permit because um, it is an existing non-conforming condition and the board is allowed to uh, approve that with a finding that it is not substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood. Um, then here on the side, um, the required setback is 10 feet. They're proposing 15, so that uh, does not create any issues at all. Um, and then the rear yard is where it's a little quirky. So the depth of the rear yard, so the depth of the rear yard is 20 feet or 20% of the depth of the lot. So the depth of the lot is 92 feet. Um, and so 10% of that is I believe the 17.1, or so excuse me, 18.4, as is listed here on the drawings. Um, but the existing is 22.3. For some reason, the rear and side yards here are reversed. Um, and so uh, at the, there's no change proposed to the rear yard. So that is not an issue. Um, so the, the things that the board needs to, um, to determine, uh, one is the large addition. Uh, number two is the relocation of the parking space. Uh, those are both fall under special permits. And then the third is the variance for the extension uh, for the addition that is proposed in the front yard setback. Um, so that is the proposal. Um, that the board has before us. Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Hanlon. Just one question. In, in terms of the porch, I, I can't, I'm too far away from my screen to see exactly what the distance is, but I take it that the 
extension of the porch into the minimum bylaw is is less than the amount that's required for a special permit. I've forgotten exactly how far it can go out by right. That I'm looking that up right now under five, section 539A. Um, so porches, not more than 25 square feet in floor area or more than one story high, which do not project more than three and one half feet beyond the line of the foundation wall may extend beyond the minimum yard regulations, otherwise provided for the district to which subject is built. Porches and enclosed entrances larger than allowed above may be extended into the minimum yard regulations otherwise provided for the district by special permit. So the board would need to, because it's four feet rather than three and a half feet, the board would be required to uh, also make a finding on that as well. Thank you. Are there questions or comments from the board? Mr. Chair. Mr. Cadelli. I have a qu I have a question about um the retaining walls on the uh sort of I, I guess the gay street frontage of the the proposed uh addition. So it it looked um like there are some existing retaining walls where there's the existing parking area and it looks like in the in the new plan there's um some retaining walls there as well. I just wanted to clarify from the applicant um does the parking occur I, I don't see them on the site plan is the parking within those new uh or retaining walls and, and are those new are they being reconstructed what's uh, what is the plan there um yeah thanks for the question they the parking does occur within those re existing retaining walls there's cineblock retaining walls um that were put in some time ago and they are um they do need repair if not reconstruction and they would be very similar to the existing walls but with upgraded materials and and a better curb appeal okay so that um that expanded parking that the chair mentioned we you'd basically be moving that um retaining wall on, on the far side of uh away from the corner further on in order to expand that parking area is that correct uh, no actually i think the walls would be put in essentially in the exact same space okay, um, okay. We, we're just losing some depth of our parking because we're building the addition over some of the existing um, parking space primarily that's the land that's being affected is paved parking okay uh, mr Chuck. mr leblanc uh, my question is, was there any exploration dur during kind of initial design about um, doing the addition in the kind of footprint of what is considered the side yard, since the setback there is much more forgiving and you ha might have the potential to not have to go through and get a variance? So there's a, there's a couple of different issues that would have prevented us from either moving, I'm not sure which one is the side yard, the the down Gay Street towards um, towards our neighbor that is essentially behind our house um, or towards the up Washington Street towards the neighbor that's to our side of our house. Um, in both cases, it would have prevented us from staying in the home very likely because our bedrooms are on the side of the house where we have more room to move out. Um, and we would have had to reconstruct the entire, you know, the you know, format when really our principal aim is to create more living space and a better kitchen design that sort of flows into our backyard and patio area. We also didn't want to expand towards the, um, you know, further down uh, along Gay Street towards our neighbor house because then that would would really reduce the space between our houses and the 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 feel between their house and our house and the way our backyards are situated together. We feel like that would be more disruptive than the current plan. It would also eat up our, what is essentially our small backyard um, where we have a patio space.
Mr. Chairman? Do you mind me? Sorry. I'm sorry, Ms. Ms. Farrell, please go ahead. You you go first. Sorry. Thank, thank you. I, I was just going to also say, as the chairman noted at the very beginning, our large trees yeah and i can i can i think uh my wife is in, in the car and it's gonna be hard for her to have good service but the, the, yeah there would be likely that it might impact trees going in that direction which is the which is something we didn't want to do we have large oak trees that that provide a great shade that um are on the property line on that on one side of the house we planted a new tree um near our back patio that is growing and we also have planted several other trees along gay street that we we hope will will be maintained in the future chairman mr hanlon um mr Crenna, i wonder when did you first realize that going out and under the plan that you have in mind meant uh, that you were, had to deal with a 20-foot setback requirement that you needed to use for your house? Um, I think we had some initial conversations with a contractor about it, and there was, I think, some initial sort of belief that it would be treated as a side yard, but then once we found out that it was treated as a front yard, in fact, the front yard on a dead-end street, that we would that we would need to go through this process. Um, and we felt like that the plan that we put together helps to maintain the house look and feel um, and increase the, the the curb appeal of the existing house. If I, I mean, I, I sort of agree with what that and what that others have said that when you, when you look at the house uh, from the point of view of the money of the purposes of the bylaw, this is the best of the alternatives that you can readily see. But coming up would also present some problems, I think, with with, with some of the neighbors and with the general pattern here. Um, but as I'm sure the chairman will shortly explain, uh, <laughs> there are very rigorous requirements in state law that are prerequisites for before we even get to this to the point of what makes good sense. Uh, that we need to have in order to be able to grant a variance. And in particular, those need to come from either the soils or the topography or the shape of the lot. Um, and Mr. Chair, maybe I had to just have you to start with this, but I'd like to have Mr. Cronin uh, uh, address that first criteria and make the best case he can for why it is that that he satisfies it because that's kind of is the precondition for getting to everything else on what makes mm -hmm. good sense. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, the, the prim primarily most of the addition is going to be built over paved land and mm -hmm. um, it will allow us to move forward in, in um, landscaping. So that way we can, you know, better set up the, the lawn to handle runoff and to, to deal with, um, those kinds of issues. And I, I don't know if that helps to answer your question, but right now, um, the existing, the existing structure um, pours out onto the, onto the driveway and then the driveway pours off into the street. Um, and we would like to address that issue. And we're not, we're not covering a great deal of, of green space within our lot. And it'll allow us to to have more opportunity to move forward with landscaping and tree planting. Thank you. Um, so as we had done on the prior hearing, um, so special permit, there's a, sec there's a series of findings the board needs to make in order to support a special permit. Um, and there's some additional findings that are required for uh, the, the uh, the large addition. However, variance is is very different than a special permit. Um, variance is the terms for a variance are set under Mass General Law Chapter 40A, Section 10. Um, there are four essential tests that the board needs to uh, needs to address, and it needs to make a positive finding on all four tests in order for it to be allowed to grant a variance. Um, so those four tests, just to go through them uh, first, 
is um, that there must be a circumstance relating to the soil condition, shape, or topography, especially if affecting such land or structures, but not affecting generally the zoning district in which it is located, that would substantiate the granting of a variance. Uh, the second is describe how a literal enforcement of the provisions of the zoning bylaw specifically relating to the circumstances affecting the land or structure noted above, which would involve substantial hardship, financial or otherwise, to the petitioner or appellant. The third is to describe how desirable relief may be granted without substantial detriment to the public good. And the last is to describe how desirable relief may be granted without nullifying or substantially derogating from the intent or purpose of the zoning bylaw of the town of Arlington, Massachusetts. So on that first uh, test, so what is it about the, what circumstances relating to the soil condition, the shape or the topography, especially affecting this land and structure, but not generally affecting the zoning district in which it is located? that would substantiate the granting of a variance. Um, I think that the, I, I believe that we're not changing the, the land substantially from the existing space in terms of the, it's, it's um, impact on the topography. The, the, the ground will principally be left much the same. We're building over an existing porch structure. We're building over existing hardscape um, uh, for the vast majority of the addition. But is is there something specific about the soil conditions on your site that are different than every than other houses in the district? Is there something about the shape of your lot that is different than other property in the zoning district? Or is there some... Sure something about the topography of your site that is different than other properties in the district. Because if the board can't make that finding, we can't proceed with the rest of the variance application. So the so the shape of our our lot is somewhat irregular. It you know it's not a rectangular lot. It it has a curved front um uh corner there that um, to be quite frank, creates, you know, traffic issues in terms of the speed of cars coming around those, the corner. And then uh, it also is um, irregularly shaped in terms of the angles that it has along Gay Street relative to Washington Street. Can I also note that the um, we sit right at the base of Turkey Hill. So there's a lot of runoff, um, as my husband noted. So we get a ton of runoff that comes down from the hill, uh, washing out the, into the street. Um, this addition would actually allow us to move the structure out slightly and redo the landscaping in such a way that we could level out that soil and help us address issues related to the runoff. Um, mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's just going to continue to run straight Right. We don't even have any grass growing in that space where the addition mm -hmm. is going to be going now because it all washes out. Um, mm -hmm. And so now we would have a structure and foundation there and we would be able to landscape in a way that would help reduce that runoff into the street. So you see that it's runoff from Washington Street that is running. No, on we live on, no Both down actually. Turkey Hill. Yeah, um, it runs off of like the street that is sort of parallel to Gay Street above us. Um, those okay. houses are situated sort of above the the wall, and the the water runs down along the sort of property lines and off into the um, our our sort of side yard on Gay Street. Um, and it makes it impossible to put in, you know, grass or other other. So we've we've had to put in shrubs to help sort of protect the runoff situation. The grass has been totally eroded. And on Washington Street, it there's whenever there's a large storm, it runs right down Washington Street and it's eroding the yard and those kinds of things. But that's I don't think principally in what we're talking about here. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Hanlon, yeah, maybe I'm maybe this is a little. I'm going to try to focus on the way in which the 
there's a reason why it is you need to go, to go out to towards Gay Street. And that has a lot to do with, I'm just going to not try to get it exactly right, but it has to do with the way in which the house is organized, that uh, the kitchen is in the wrong spot to build out in some other way. Uh, the bedrooms would be difficult for you to stay in the house if you build out in another way. And all of those things, when you take them together, are the hardship that would um, that would arguably justify a variance under the second of the criteria. So the first criterion is an arbitrary thing that the legislature put in 50 years ago uh, in order to prevent people like us from being too liberal in granting variances. And it said, it's okay if there's hardship in lots of reasons. The only ones we care about and we're going to let the the zoning boards care about are hardships that are caused by soil shape or topography. So to give you an example of what that might mean, if suppose you were in a situation where um, you had to build, if you're going to build anywhere, you had to build within a setback because the rest of your lot was so steep that it was not buildable. That would be a hardship due to topography. And, okay. and and that still wouldn't count if the topography was common to other parcels in the area. It has to be relatively unique. Obviously, a similar thing would be happen if you had to move and build in a certain place to avoid wetlands. That would be where soils would come in. And the shape of the lot might come in as a sort of an arbitrary example. It might come up mm -hmm. if the lot is so narrow that there isn't any ways to put in the house and still observe the setbacks. So mm -hmm. what the legislature is asking us to do and asking you to do is to relate the hardship to the thing that yeah. that is one of these first things. And I think that it's fair mm -hmm. to say that the topography you have here is pretty much shared with much of what the neighbor is. And that's not where you're coming from. And the soil conditions hardly matter because it's mostly already paved over. So the main thing that that you've identified so far is the shape of the lot, which is somewhat irregular. Um, and I guess what I'd like you to do is to, is to yeah. articulate why it is the shape mm -hmm. of the lot is the reason why it is you have the hardship that makes you want to move to move into the to the front yard yeah. setback on the Gay Street side. Okay, so I can first I can actually clarify a, a point because now I, I think I understand the first condition a little bit better and I appreciate your your guidance on that. The if we we cannot build out on essentially if you're facing the front of our house on Gay Street to the right, um, not only because it makes it challenging for us to remain in the home with um, our daughter who's in public schools here in Arlington, but it would also the the there's a very steep sort of hill and existing trees that are there that would prevent us moving in that direction very far at all without completely inhibiting the ability to, to move around the house on that side. Um, that would also create, I think, a great deal more runoff that other, that other houses in our neighborhood do not have to wrestle with in that way because our house is facing sideways on the, the relatively steep hill where with a very big embankment on the right side of our house, such that if the if if you know the roof runoff was coming down from there and it was in greater size, it would increase the volume of water that would be pouring off the house on the far right hand side, uphill side of our house, and pouring down along the yard uh, in a fashion that would 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 increase the the the, the problems with the soil and the runoff there. Um, and lastly, I think related to the point that you, you, you mentioned about this, the, the shape of our lot, we are situated sort of on this corner lot where our house is towards the back side of the lot, where we do not have very big sort of backyard space that is private. Um, and any expansion on that side would, would probably unduly burden our neighbors a lot more than the expansion going this way. It would also take away any backyard functional that that we have at this point in time, right? Um, and so this is the sort of the the best option, and really the only option that would work for us. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Cronin. You're welcome, Mr. Cronin. Did you look at all into 
extending the house upwards. We did. We did. And there's a couple of things that would really prevent us from doing that. First, you know, our daughter is, uh, you know, in eighth grade and we wouldn't want to be moving out of the house for any substantial period of time. Um, and it would be just a, too big of a hardship to to go through that sort of period of time in that way. The second is just that it would be uh, an increase in cost that would be really um, prohibitive for us. And the third is is that we expect to be living in this home for the remainder of our lives. Our wife, my wife, and I, we we're you know invested community members here in Arlington. Great relationships with our neighbors, involved in activities. We expect to maintain that community engagement throughout our lives, and we want to stay in a in a place that allows us to have one floor of ground level living that we that we can continue on. Okay. What would the 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 area that you're creating or you're proposing to create on the on the basement level? um on gay street what is what would that space be used for mostly additional storage um we have very little additional storage we have a, a finished basement or partially finished basement um and it's very hard to have uh, any other kinds of like you know sheds around our house given the the way the layout is and so this would allow us to have space to put bikes and other kinds of things that we we currently struggle to sort of balance in our existing home. Because partly, partly my concern. So as the parking space, you know, eight and a half by 18, I'm a little concerned that the way that the parking space is shown on the plan right now, it, it is exactly 18 feet from the edge of your property to the face of the wall. Um, And so unless you part, you know, so essentially you're going to be parking partly on gay street parking partly on your property partly off your property and if you park a, a second car next to it that would only be exacerbated because it's getting that dimension is getting narrower so it's curious if you had looked into it all into providing extending the parking under the proposed addition at all um i think we we're going to keep the the width of our current Lot, right, but you're, you're reducing the depth of the parking right that you have now by eleven feet. Yes, um, and I don't, I don't know that I, I don't um, see where that would be a problem. We would be able to we fit two cars in that space on a regular basis. I'm um, not concerned about the width. I'm concerned about the depth. Yeah, so the the, the cars would not be. On the one car would fit on your property, but the other car would likely be partially parked on your property and partly parked off your property. Well, we fit cars um, next to each other in yep. that space, and yep. so they would not be partially. Again, parked I'm not worried about the side by side. I'm worried about the length of the car. Yeah, because you're moving where the front bumper can go. You're moving that point eleven feet closer to the street. Yep. So the back of the car is no longer on your property. The back of the car would potentially be off your property. And so I'm just trying to wrestle with that in terms of how it would that be would... it would be still be within the driveway, but you mean it would be off of the it would the... not be on your property. Uh, okay. Um well that it would not in any way create any situation with our with a dead end street that consists of you know six neighbors um all of whom are are in support of this okay. this plan um it doesn't inhibit the view uh in terms of safety issues around kids playing in the streets and um it wouldn't negatively impact anything about the look and feel of the neighborhood okay we can currently park two cars next to each other, even if you move it all the way back and not be into the street, so. Yeah. Are there other questions from the board?
seeing none, um, this time I'm going to go ahead and open this hearing for public comment. Um, I would again just note that public comment is taken as it relates to the matter at hand it should be directed to the board for the purpose of informing its decision. Members of the public wish to speak can digitally raise their hand using the button on the reactions tab in the Zoom application. Those calling in by phone made out of star nine to indicate you'd like to speak. You'll be called upon by the chair, asked to give your name and address for the record, and you'll be given time for questions and comments. So are there any members of the public who wish to address um, this hearing, which is docket 38? 02 for 296 Washington Street. Uh, I see a hand raised. Um, so Patrick Harrigan, Harrington, excuse me. Yes, thank you. Uh, this is Patrick Harrington. Uh, we live at 8 Gay Street and uh, the Cronins and Farrells of our neighbors. I uh, just wanted to say that we fully support their plan. Um, and uh, Shay made a very good point about the runoff. There is right now a situation where a fair amount of runoff water from the street that is parallel to Gay Street further up the hill really is coming down onto the street. And I think the plan that I've heard about should help uh, to prevent that. Thank you very much. Um... Not sure why I have a second person here with a hand up, but that's, that's not me. <laughs> I was going to say, I'm looking at two places. Uh, there is a, another person identified as Shay Cronin, if they could go ahead and identify themselves. And uh, I don't you know. know who that is. Oh, uh, sorry. This is uh, Michelle and Matthew Pomachi. We live at 12 Gay Street. We didn't update the link. Um, so sorry about that. Uh, we just wanted to say that we also were neighbors of uh, Shay and Amy, and we also fully support this. Um, uh, building plan. Great. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. Um, Tanya Hughes. Uh, hi there, Tanya Hughes, 87 Barnum Street. I was wondering, I can't tell from the things that I've looked at so far, so apologies if it's actually covered in the site plan. Um, is there a sidewalk on this lot? Um, and I was just wondering, uh, Mr. Klein, if your questions about the depth of the parking had to do with whether or not the end of the car would be overlapping onto the sidewalk, which I know that the applicant um, has assured us that the end of the car would not would be remaining on his property. But if there's a sidewalk, you can't park on the sidewalk, right? That is correct. Yeah. So this there, there is no sidewalk. There are no sidewalks on either Washington or on Gay Street. OK, thank you. You are very welcome. Are there any other members of the public who wish to address this application? Being none, I will go ahead and close public comment for this hearing. Um, and so the board will deliberate and um, discuss whether to close the hearing or to continue the hearing. Um, so what the board has before it um, is a project that requires both special permits and a variance. Um, as we identified the special permits that the board has required, um, one is the large addition um, because the addition is in excess of 750 square feet outside the footprint of the existing house. Um, the second is that um, the relocation of the parking space um, would require a finding of the board that it is not substantially more detrimental, which is a special permit finding. And the third um, is that the front porch being uh, four feet in depth um, requires a special permit under 439A. Um, and then in the, the then in addition, uh, the board is required uh, would be required to find, to issue a variance, um, and the variance would be for uh, a new nonconformity in regards to the front yard setback along Gay Street. Um, and I 
do not believe there's any other conditions that require a variance. Okay. Uh, so then the main, the main question before the board then is really, um, we can go through the, the special permit findings, but I think it would be better for us if we were to uh, review um, the criteria for the variance and see if the board feels that um, the, uh, the, can, the circumstances um, that the board can make the requisite findings under this, under the, uh, the state bylaws, uh, 40A section 10. Um, so the first criteria, um, as we said, is the circumstances related to soil condition, shape, or topography, especially affecting such land or structure but not affecting generally the zoning district in which it's located that would substantiate the granting of a variance. Um, and as the applicant has said, and I encourage him to correct me if, if I'm wrong, um, as Mr. Hanlon has stated, there, there really isn't anything about the soil conditions uh, that are unique to this site. Uh, there's nothing particular about the topography um, that is unusual for properties in this district. Um, it really comes down to the question of the shape of the lot um, and the location of the house on the lot itself. Um, I'm just going to reshare the site plan. Um, so as we can see here, that the shape, the lot is slightly trapezoidal, um, and it currently meets the rear yard setback, currently meets the side yard setback, currently meets the front yard setback on both streets. Um, it would really be this change here to the front that would require the variance. Um, as was noted by the applicant, uh, there are several large uh, oak and maple trees um, that are sort of here on the boundary along Washington Street. Um, and then there are some additional uh, large trees uh, located here in the front yard. Um, as the applicant had noted, they're, they're unable to extend towards Washington Street because they're essentially tied up against the setback. Um, they would only be able to add a couple feet on this side. Um, while they do have the ability to add more off the back um, before reaching the required setback, that would impact uh, the existing trees that are in the back yard. Um, while they could take more of an advantage of the, the side yard here, um, they've opted not to do so because of the, um, the proximity of the house on the adjacent property. And so uh, they felt that the only place they had where they could really expand the house um, is on the Gay Street side uh, which, um, because the zoning bylaw is considered a front yard with a 25 foot setback, um, and they would be requesting um, not actually a full 15.5 because it's actually to this corner here. So it's a slightly, uh, so probably in the neighborhood of 16, 16 and a half feet um, to this corner is what the request is. Um, but the question before the board, and I would ask members of the board sort of what they feel, do they find that there is something related to this house, this property that is not related to the district in general that would substantiate the granting of a variance? Uh, Mr. Chair. Mr. LeBlanc. I have a little bit of trouble with this one. Um, mostly because if you look at their adjacent neighbor on Washington Street, it's a pretty similar lot shape and um, dwelling location to this property. So when we 
have to compare to other properties in the zoning district. I think there's a comparable one right next to it that makes it difficult to come to a, a finding on that one. May I, may I speak to that issue, Mr. Mr. Chairman? Yeah. Um, yeah. So if you're uh, if you're referring to the house that is uh, up Washington to our right, that house also has a garage structure that is on the side of the house that would effectively make it the the width of our house plus the addition. And that house is also on a much leveler plot. And ours is on a much more slanting plot coming down the hill. He's effectively at the top of the hill where it's leveled out. And then there's a steep embankment. And then our house is graded down along Washington Street. Um, and so our, our lot really is unique compared to our immediate neighbors in that we are facing uh, Washington Street and the grade is sideways across our house and it is nowhere sort of particularly level um, except for on, you know, just in the, that small backyard area where we have the, the wall that we constructed. So, Mr. Chairman, in the summary, when you mentioned the three things, the soil condition, mm -hmm. the shape, and the top topography, earlier in addressing Mr. Hanlon's questions, I made the case that it's both the shape and the topography, not okay. just not just the shape. Well, thank you for that correction. I appreciate that. Mr. Chairman? Mr. Hanlon? If I could ask, Mr. Cronin, let's imagine that you had the same the same need to provide additional space and you squared off this property so it would be square and it was flat but you still don't want to go up because it's too expensive you still don't want to go out to what we are thinking of as the side yard but which you probably usually think of as your backyard um, because that takes away your backyard and also makes you too close to the neighboring property. What I wonder is, of the reasons why it is that you really want this design and don't want any alternative, how it would be different if this lot were flat and square? How it would be different if this lot was flat and square? What consideration would be different? And I'm Focusing now on your actual reasons for wanting to to do it this way rather than go up or rather to go in a different direction. It would allow us to expand our living space. We, we currently have a very small dining room space that cannot fit any additional people other than four people to sit at a table um, in a very small living room space. And it, it's very hard to have sort of any other folks join us in that space. You know, but how would, it, how would a square if, lot change that? How, can it, how, so if it was flat and square, Mr. If Hanlon. If the lot was flat and yes. square, how would If the it, lot was flat and square, we could actually go back. We could build in the backyard. We could build back where the, the bedrooms yeah. are. We cannot do that. There's these huge trees and there's a very steep grade. Right. And so our also, property. We should also em emphasize that there's a large arboretum Arboreta, uh, arbovita in the back, in the what, what, what is it, our side yard, which means that if we were to push back towards the property line, we would be affecting those trees as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, and they're over 30 feet tall. So the, the structure of that, that back braid, um, although our property line goes further back, we functionally can't build anything on that grade because the grade is going up to that house that's on our right so that's okay. the, our next door neighbor that has a as my husband said flat lot uh, that you know he can utilize the full lot whereas we can really only utilize the lot where we're not on that steep grade so the front is yeah. really the only place to go at this point in time may i interrupt Mr. Carriero, you're, I believe you are the contractor, is that correct? I am, yes. I just yes, been sir. sitting here listening. So um, so I looked at all, all the scenarios that I could think of for the remodel 
of this house for the needs that they are looking for. And of course, number one cost, right? And because we, my first proposal was just go up with it, you know, don't deal with what, what you need to go through like we are right now. But it, it, they actually, they, like they have stated, they want to stay on this house. They want to retire here and, and raise the kids here and all that stuff and, and their grandkids and so on. So to keep the house as laid out the way it is without touching the bedrooms and the bathrooms that's on the right side of the house, this is the most cost effective way because on the other side, the grade comes up so high that we're going to have issues with termites trying to dealing with slabs and all that stuff. So it wouldn't work there. And like they have mentioned, there's a lot of trees there that they don't want to give up because it gives them a lot of privacy. If you have, if you've seen it, they actually have done a beautiful job with their backyard and it'd just be a shame to just get rid of all that. So my proposal to them is to go for the special permit and the variance on this side, because I felt like this is would be would work the best for them in this lot without compromising three quarters of the house and just adding on to this side so that they can get their kitchen space, their entertainment space, their outdoor space. And without, you know, obviously it also always comes down to cost as well and trying to keep them within the budget. So the proposal is what I said to them that I thought was worth going for as you guys have seen some of the houses that we have done that we've gone from some of these uh, special permits and variances that I think will work really good for them, especially for a lot of the neighbors in the neighborhood that I've done a lot of work for and talk to them that, of course, they don't want to lose them because they want to stay there. And, and so the proposal really came down to me working with the survey and working on board my architect to come up with a plan that fit within, fit within their budget that were accommodate all their needs and without touching their bedrooms that they're completely happy with, the bathroom that they have, they're completely happy with, and gives them all that entertainment space and all that living space that they can enjoy. So that's why this proposal is brought upon you guys the way it is, because for those reasons, and that's why, you know, I just can't see how the lot would work unless, of course, you knock the house down and start it all over again, which is not something they want to do. So then this is why it's proposed this way. I just wanted to put my two cents in for that. Well, thank you for that. Thank you. And I'm here if you need to ask me any other questions. Okay, thank you. Mr. Chairman. Mr. DuPont. So I was just on Google Maps, and so I think if you look at it from uh, literally a bird's eye view, you'll see that many lots in the area are not uh, rectangular. So to me, the lot shape part of the basis for arguing a variance um, doesn't fit. It, it, you know, I just don't think it's that unique. I mean, I think when we think about lot shape, we're thinking about something, as Mr. Hanlon had said, is extremely narrow or perhaps triangular or what have you. So for the variance, so we don't think it's soil condition, I don't think. Um, and I think Mr. Cronin has said topography. And, and I think that, you know, I'm not convinced one way or the other that that argument is sufficient um, only because I think that it's sort of the first time we're hearing about it and I, I'm not um, I'm not blaming Mr. Cronin for that. I think that you know variances I think are hard for us to understand at times and interpret. And so I think that you know people coming into this, it's sort of um, obscure obscure when you're thinking about well, what does it mean and how do you approach it? So on the one hand, I, I think I understand from what both you know Mr. Cronin and Ms. Farrell, I believe it is, um, have said about you know the slope of the land, but I'm not sure to what extent that actually would prohibit you from doing the building. And I, I think again, as Mr. Hanlon had said, you know, the second part of this, which is the hardship, 
seems pretty clear to me too. I mean, you know, the way that the house is situated on the lot and the way the rooms are configured and, you know, using it very differently might actually not be workable. But for me, I would want to know more about the um, topography part of things in terms of measurements and, you know, whatever else can be added to make that argument stronger. Because at the moment, I don't feel like I have enough information um, to make a decision. And so I don't know whether there's a way of supplying that information. I realize we're having a discussion, but I don't know if there are some more details, you know, that could be provided um, for us perhaps to hear more at another meeting. But right now, again, I, I don't know enough or have enough information to make a decision. Mr. Chairman? Mr. Hanlon. Um, it seems to me that probably the very best way to get a judgment on this is to see it for ourselves. And I was wondering if we, if the applicant were agreeable, if we could do a continuance and between now and July 9th, uh, organize a site visit so we can actually see what they're talking about and, and you know, not infer from drawings and, and, and contours and whatever, but just see what the problem is. That may be the best way for us to to actually get it on our heads and feel com more comfortable making the making the the judgment that we're called upon to make. I must say that I feel a little bit like Mr. DuPont. Obviously the topography, if you just mean the general slope up and down Washington Street, is common to every property on Washington Street. But particular problem in the backyard that arguably makes it impossible well we're now calling the, the side yard that makes it difficult to to use that alternative uh is something that i i think the best way we could the best way we could inform ourselves would be if we saw it for ourselves so i i appreciate the suggestion and i welcome uh, the the board to to come out and look at it. I would also like to just add relative to um, what Mr. Dupont mentioned is that I do believe we provided um, topographical drawings to about the as part of the plot plan. There was an additional piece of the information that we submitted. I, if I'm not mistaken. I don't see it in the record. So we could do that if, if needed, or I mean, I do actually agree that I think it's really helpful if you actually see it, um, because it's a pretty significant slope up in the back, and it, we would definitely welcome that opportunity to okay. show members of the committee. All right. So um, <clears throat> with that, I would ask if if you could um, submit the, the site plan that includes the contours. Does that also include the trees, too? Do you know? We can provide that. Um, I think that would be very helpful if we could have uh, that in our record. Um, and then I will ask. Um, you we, you like a tree plan? Yeah, if you have it. Yeah, we just, oh, we, yeah, because totally there's so much of what we're discussing has to do with the, the location of those existing trees. I think it would be important to have that in the record. Do you want us to shoot to also provide you with grades from the highest point to the lowest point? Um, so you can see what a runoff is like. Yeah, so I, Mr. Cronin had mentioned that there was a, or uh, his wife had mentioned that there was a uh, a plot plan that had contours on it. And so I think that mm -hmm. would be helpful because the plot plan, the only plot plan we have just has the, the outlines of the existing and proposed. It doesn't have trees and it doesn't have contours. Yeah, I can do, I can do a site plan and just show you all the trees and everything else on it. Okay. So you can see all the grades and how they how it, how dramatically it changes from okay. one end of the house to the other. Sure. All right, and then very easily done. Okay, and then um, I would just ask Ms. Ralston tomorrow we can uh, work on trying to schedule uh, with the applicant for a time when the the board can visit. Um, and if the board goes at the same time, we have to advertise it. So. Uh, we just have to take make sure we we do that properly for for public meetings. Um, could we just do the two by two? The we Noah's, could do two by two as well. Noah's Ark, uh, yeah, sort, sort of thing. 
<laughs> Absolutely. Again, I think it would be, I mean, I just to encourage us maybe to, we've we've done this before when, when it's advertised, it's only a couple of days, as I recall. That's when we last- It is 48 it. hours. And I think it would be helpful for it to have us go out and have uh, 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 Mr. Cronin and Mr. Farrell uh, show us what they mean and and you know just explain it to us and do it under circumstances where we all sort of see the same thing or at least everybody who can make the being. So yeah. I'd encourage us not to do it two by two. We don't really have to. We just have to make sure that we don't discuss it while we're there. Um, but as long as we know how to keep our lips zipped, we ought to be able to see the same thing and see and and let Mr. Cronin point out what it is we ought to look at, which we won't necessarily see if we just if we just go by or, you know, maybe Mr. Carrero will be doing that. But but somebody ought to be in a position of just showing what it means. And I think that Mr. Cronin has, has done a really good job, as has Ms. Farrell, about explaining it. And I'll, I will be there with them as well. Perfect. Yeah, okay. and I'll provide you with the plan, with the, with the tree plan, and all that, so you can see all that. I can I can get that done in a couple of days. Appreciate that. Thank you, mm -hmm. um, Mr. Chair. May I make yes. a request, Mr. Uh, Gadelli? If if the if the contractor is um, going to be there for that um, site meeting, it would be really helpful. It has been helpful in the past. If you could just like put a stake where you think the you know new corner of the addition would be, uh, or just generally, yeah. so that we could understand. Uh, that, uh, especially with these corner lots, um, you know, that, that double setback uh, partly has to do with being able to see from a, from a vehicular standpoint across sure. the corner. So it's really helpful for us to know, um, you know, how close the, the edge of the building is going to be. Yeah, I'll stake it all out and show you how high it will come up and all that so you can see what the view will be like coming around the corner and all that. Because, you know, we're very sensitive to that too, because... We all know there's a lot of places in Arlington that are so tough to drive around because you know, whether somebody grows a big tree on there or whatever. But yeah, I'll stake it all out for you. No problem. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kadavan. So yeah. with that, um, the chair will accept a motion to continue the public hearing for docket uh, 3802, 296 Washington Street until Tuesday... July 9 at 7 30 p.m. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Second. Hanlon. Motion by Mr. Hanlon, seconded by Mr. DuPont. Then a vote of the board. Um, Mr. DuPont? Aye. Mr. Hanlon? Aye. Mr. Riccadelli? Aye. Ms. Hoffman? Aye. Mr. LeBlanc? Aye. And the chair vote. Uh, so we are continued on 296 Washington Street. Thank you all for being with us this evening. And uh, we will be in contact about a site visit. All right. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Have you all. Uh, so with that, going back to our agenda, the next item is docket 3803, 40 Sutherland Road. So if I could go ahead and ask the applicants to go ahead and introduce themselves. And... Tell us what they are proposing, and I will go and find the drawings. The applicant. I believe he's on mute. Oh, the Mr. Papillier your mute is on. Uh, can you hear me? No? We can, yes. Sorry about that. So, good evening, sir. This is fine, and what's the board members? Thank you for this opportunity. I live on 47 in July. Um, in the height. Um, again, I would note that it's very hard to hear you, sir. I don't know. Can, 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 how about now? Uh, it's a little bit, it's a, sort of a hum or a hiss or something in the background. I'm not sure what that is. Yeah, let me see. Now. Oh, that's much better. Yeah, it's my my AirPods. Sorry about that. Um, So you're going to get nope, a close-up no. now because I, I, I can hear you. Okay, so thank you again. Um, I live on 40 Sutherland Road, um, a family of four, two teenage children, uh, 17 years old, and my wife and I. And we have a single driveway that we'd like to extend to the, when you're looking at the front of the house to the left. 
um, to put another parking spot there so that we can accommodate another car. We've had one car since we've been here for seven years. And now that the kids want to drive, we need another parking spot because on the road, you cannot park on the street overnight. Um, and so it's a really difficult situation. We've been doing it, taking mass transit for seven years. I work in South Boston. So we really, you know, it came to, it's come to the point where we need to, to have a second driveway. And um, we've, we did the proposal with uh, Colleen. She's been very helpful. And uh, that's what we're asking. So, cool. thank you. Um, so this is the plot of the land, and this is the existing uh, parking space that they have. Um, Correct. <clears throat> so what what what's not <clears throat> really excuse me clear from the drawing, um, just past the end of the parking space is a significant drop off. Yes. Um, and there's from the the edge of the driveway here is about a f almost a foot off the land and the land slopes away and then there's a retaining wall and then there's a a significant drop before it gets to the house um so there's a a, a large amount of topography in this area um which precludes extending the driveway back at all um and yeah, the lot is drop. incredibly small Uh, so this is the this is the existing condition, and then this is the proposed condition. So I think if I'm correct, the the reason that this is sort of shown in this curved fashion because is because that's the uh, the location of the existing retaining wall. Is that correct? That is the that 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 shows the existing retaining wall in the back of the driveway, and that would be the new retaining wall curving to the on the left hand side. And then coming up, and then finally just going into the ground and meeting the the road or the sidewalk. Okay. okay. So existing condition. So we're not making the proposal is not to make it any deeper. It's just to to widen it to allow uh, for a second vehicle. Uh, Correct. Park on it. Okay. And we would be using permeable pavers, not asphalt. Yeah. Yeah, it is. I believe it's brick masonry today. Is that correct? Uh, yes, it is. That would be removed and then re, um, put down with uh, permeable block uh, uh, squares or rectangles, whatever we choose. Okay. Is there any kind of like curb or bumper or something at the end of the driveway? Yeah, uh, there's a. Sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say, from for me personally, if I was trying to teach yeah, my kids to slight, drive, this would scare the dickens out of me. Um, yeah, there's a slight dip when you, when you go go there. Um, mm -hmm. It's it's not great. It's not big, but it's it's a slight dip from the height. Then you go down maybe, I don't know how high it is, a foot maybe. But it, it goes over a span of maybe, I'd have to measure. Mm -hmm. um, the width of a sidewalk plus so it, it drops down okay we could we could we would make that as smooth as possible to keep the sidewalk straight and and match it as best okay are there questions from the board mr chair mr leblanc um, there's another drawing that was shared as part of the record that has a little bit more dimension on it. And I was just a little unsure if we, if you could actually fit two cars on the drawing that was provided. Um, just seems like there's not enough, enough depth, uh, in the new, yeah, this, this drawing here, that there's not enough depth. Um, once you start to get to um, this kind of area that's shaded in that red pink, that that's kind of where a car would be given some some of these dimensions. Yes, so we we've thought about that, and so that may not be the best accurate drawing. I think it's better on the on the on the um, plot plan, but 
we would have to, it would be limited. You couldn't put a, like a huge SUV there. We'd have to have a smaller car. And that would be, the, that would be the, and that's what we plan on doing. Okay. We're limited by um, what we're doing there. And, and you're working to maintain a walking path between where the driveway would be and the house. Yes, we would be building steps to going down the incline. Okay. That would be part of the project. There's, would it there's now, there's, be... there's steps there now. There's like, go ahead. Okay. I was just going to say, does it, is there any advantage to squaring this off and doing stairs off the back of the driveway to allow you to have the this additional space for for your driveway. It's quite, it's quite the drop. It's about. Or is that just overly complicated? It's about things? a seven foot drop, and that would take a lot of space out of there because we want to have mm -hmm. a, a living area down there, like with a little patio and a and a table. Where it's a okay. very very small lot, unfortunately. No. Um, it, yeah, it's a two thousand square foot lot. <laughs> it's tiny. Yeah, it's a postage stamp. I don't have to, mowing the lawn is great though. <laughs> <laughs> but it is a unique situation and the houses, the the three houses that are here are all like that, right? So it's a very difficult um situation. Um so we'd like to improve it. And it, it would it would uh we would do it tastefully done, it would be done well. Um and it would serve the benefit of available two cars and also would be convenient, you know, if we were ever to sell the place, people would enjoy that also, right? So it would increase the value. So quickly share the, this is from the, town's prop uh, land viewer so this is just showing the it's these four houses here along sutherland that have these very tiny yard depths yes That topography viewer doesn't really help, but um, I'll go ahead and stop the share. Are there any other questions or comments from the members of the board? Uh, Mr. Chair, just one question. Yeah, sure. Mr. Um, so, so I just want to understand. Uh, so I think the new width proposed is 18 feet. It looks like the original width is about 11 six from the, from the first plot plan. So, um, the intent is to extend that curb cut, uh, whatever, six and a half feet, that additional six and a half feet. It looked like from looking at the pictures that the, the curb cut right now is shared with the, the neighbor as well. Um, you guys have kind of side by side um, yes. driveways. Okay. So now it will be sort of like a three wide curb cut off of that, um, off of center. Sutherland Street, right? Correct. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Oh, you're welcome. Um, I can share that as well. Um, so this does show that condition. Um, so the, the corner house, this is the existing driveway, uh, which would be extended in width here um this front yard tree it's not a street tree uh so it is not um a town tree it's a private tree um, yes which means which um is there any possibility that tree could be relocated is it fairly yes recent? we're working on that we're, we're that's part of the um quotes we're getting is they're moving in the back or people are very interested in it because it's a cherry tree and my wife ah, it's uh we'll see if we keep it or not we're trying to we'll see yeah. um 
Mr. Chairman. We, it, I mean, is we'd like to maybe push it a little bit further over to give us a little more width, maybe if we could, like maybe angle it a little bit. But I don't know if my my if that is aesthetically pleasing for my wife or not. To tell you the truth. <laughs> Yeah, you're just you're limited to 20 feet. So um, okay, whatever that comes so, out to. So we have 18, right? So you're requesting you have 11.6, you're requesting 18. So we could go out to 20 is what you're saying. So the by the bylaw, it has to be it can be no wider than 20. Okay. That I didn't know. Thank you. Um, but then the distance between the driveway and the house is my concern. Correct. Yeah, because that's already at 18 feet, that's already quite tight. And basically, you'd be creating more sort of the, you know, the wedge that's not deep enough to actually park in. You're probably yeah. better off keeping the 18. Feet really west much, right. Mr. Chairman. Mr. DuPont. So I, I just, I actually had gotten the Google image um, before, which is similar to what you're showing. And I just wanted to understand the distance from the edge of what the pavers are that exist today to the house. Because I know they're going from 11.6 to the 18. And um, I, I assume that that means that there's going to be um, you know, there's going to have to be some sort of retaining uh, structure built to hold that mm -hmm. to yeah. keep a level. And um, is the is the end of the driveway in toward the house? Once you extend that over to the 18 feet, how close to the house does that actually come? Because I can't tell from the drawing. It's three feet. Three feet. And so, okay. So there would be a walkway essentially or yes. some space to maneuver through. Yes. And and we're actually thinking about redoing the entire wall to be transparent because it is leaning back a little bit. And if we're going to put more weight on there, we would do it with uh with uh the concrete block. So that the whole wall would be then. It wouldn't be additional on the wall because I don't think that's strong enough for me, but um, it could be done, but I, we're, we would probably replace the whole wall. And so what would happen to that big tree at the end? In the back? Yeah. That's already gone because that was interfering with our, uh, basically with, it was it was sick and we, if we that's not the car we have anymore. We have a different car now and branches were falling on the car and denting it. And there's so we, we that has been removed. Yeah. Yeah. These images are nine months old. That was removed in March by Northeastern Tree. All right. Thank you. It's unfortunate, but we had to do it because it gave us great shade. It's we but it was yeah. a necessary thing, unfortunately. I can stop there, every time we had a storm <laughs> because the, it, a branch already did before we bought the house, snapped off and hit the house. We could see where they were, did it. And so I was just, it's much <laughs> uh, So with that, um, are there any other questions from the board before I open for public comment? Maybe not. I'm going to go ahead and open this hearing for public comment or mind. Uh, our attendees that questions or comments are taken as they relate to the matter at hand. It should be directed to the board for the purpose of informing its decision. Uh, members of the public who wish to speak can digitally raise their hand using the button on the reactions tab in the Zoom application. If you're calling it by phone, you may dial star nine. Um, you'll be I called upon by the chair, asked to give your name and address for the record and given time for questions and comments. Uh, so with that, uh, the first hand up is uh, John Hayes. Uh, this is actually Rachel Hayes at 24 Argyle Road. Uh, we are right behind Sutherland Street and are well familiar with this challenge of growing families. Uh, we support this request. Uh, there are many variations on the theme that we've all been through and think that this is a reasonable approach to solving the, uh, the family's problem. Thanks for your airtime. Thank you so much for being with us. 
Thank you. Uh, next, Mr. Steve Moore. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chair. Steve Moore, Piedmont Street. I am um, very disheartened to hear that that large tree was taken. Um, I understand that it sounds like it was kind of a complicated situation. Uh, with that tree not there, though, does that not therefore open up your possibilities for uh, lengthening as opposed to widening the driveway? Um, that drop off from the from the road from the edge of the driveway from the um, is about seven feet straight down. Um, so, mm -hmm. and so you'd have to fill in and build a retaining wall. It would it would be very expensive, and I don't know how it would look to tell you the truth because you'd have to have a retaining wall all the way down, and we'd have no yard at that point. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. That 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 makes sense. I guess I think I, you did comment about how it was a significant drop off before. Seven yeah. feet is is significant, um, and uh, I, I guess perhaps the uh, nice looking cherry tree could go where the old tree has been removed. Uh, but I am uh, the idea of that that driveway at that height being that close to your house. I think would give you significant pause. Just because unless you put some sort of ability to retain a car there and not have it drive right into your house by mistake, that's it's 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 elevated and you're halfway up the height of your dining room or, or living room or whatever's behind that big window there. I just I don't know, that just represents concern to me. But anyway, it's not my call. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Moore. Are there any other members of the public who wish to address this hearing? Seeing none, I will go ahead and close public comment for this hearing. Um, so what the board has before it, uh, so this is a special permit request. Um, it's uh, here under sec 6110A. Um, but what it really is, as far as the board is concerned, it is a um, it's an existing non-conforming front yard parking space that is being requested to be enlarged. Um, and under uh, Section 8 in our bylaw, the board is allowed to extend an existing non-conformity uh, with a determination that it is not um, consistent, is not considerably more detrimental than the existing condition. Um, so the, the existing condition, it's a single car, it's a almost a car in a third wide parking space. Uh, they would be adding 50% to the width of their existing driveway um, in front yard, which would require uh, the relocation, hopefully, or the removal of a tree in their front yard um, and the creation of a retaining wall to uh, hold the um, the parking, as was noted by the applicant. The intent is to have um, permeable a permeable surface for the parking, um, and the the intent is solely to allow for uh, the provision of a second vehicle in their driveway. Um, I would just note for the applicant um, any retaining wall greater than four feet in height does need to be engineered and issued a building permit by the uh, by the building department. So um, I just mentioned that uh, to you. Um, are there any other questions for the board about what is being requested? Uh, so in the board's evaluation of um, whether can, or not- Hey, Mr. Chair, can I ask a question on that? Oh, um, Mr. Papil, yes, sir. Yep, go right ahead. So um, if the if the existing wall is already there and we replace it, do we need an engineering diagram for that or just where it's not existing in the new wall? For that, I would have to refer you to the building department. Okay, thank you. Yep, absolutely. Um, so the in order to make the determination, um, 
that the extension or alteration uh, should not be substantially more detrimental than the existing non-conforming structure. Uh, the board typically reviews the uh, required findings for a special permit. Um, so those would be that the adverse effects of the proposed use will not outweigh its beneficial impacts. Um, the beneficial impact is that it will allow the applicant uh, to um, accommodate their expanding family and to uh, have an additional provision of transportation for the family. Um, and they're proposing to do it in a way that doesn't uh, significantly impact their neighbors or their neighbors' enjoyment of their properties. Uh, the requested use is allowed or allowed by special permit in the district. Um, this isn't a, a non-conforming use, uh, no, excuse me, a non-conforming um, uh, structure. And as such, it is allowed to be extended uh, with a determination that it is not substantially more detrimental. Uh, the requested use is essential or desirable to public convenience or welfare. Um, it is uh, desirable to allow um, the inhabitants of the town to use their uh, use their property in a way that meets the needs of their families. Um, I think we're all well aware that uh, once there are uh, children of driving age in the family, multiple cars are sometimes a, a necessity, um, and this will accommodate that for this uh, homeowner. Uh, will not create undue traffic congestion or impair pedestrian safety. Um, this will not impact any current sight lines uh, to the sidewalk um, or to the street. Um, it will create a wide uh, curb cut um, because it is joining with the curb cut on the adjacent property. Um, but each individual curb cut um, does not create an undue uh, safety hazard. Uh, will not overload any public system. As was noted by the applicant, they're planning to do pervious paving. Uh, so runoff will not be an issue onto Sutherland Road. Um, and uh, the special rate, uh, when, excuse me, the special regulation for the requested use is fulfilled. That is the, uh, under section eight, it is a requirement for uh, finding us not substantially more detrimental. Uh, requested use will not impair the character or integrity of the district. Um, there are uh, many houses in this area that have uh, parking uh, close to the street, especially on this section of Sutherland Road where the depth of the properties is only is limited, excuse me, to uh, 45 feet. Um, the request will not be detrimental to public health or welfare. Um, having the additional parking space should not have any particular impact on public health or welfare. And the requested use will not cause an excess of use detrimental to the neighborhood. Um, again, this is a single family use with accessory parking and that is um, the intended use of the district. Are there any questions from the board in relation to um, the findings that I have uh, just put forward. Seeing none, um, for applications before the board, the board typically uh, includes the three standard conditions which were read prior into the record. Are there any additional special permit conditions that the board would recommend for this application. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hanlon. I suggest that we include a condition about the, just incorporating the intent that Mr. Popiel has expressed about the permeable paving. We're relying on it and it would be useful to include that as a condition rather than just a representation at the hearing. Okay. Agreed. And I would also include um, a condition that the applicant prepare a certified plot plan for submittal to the Registry of Deeds. Can you exp ex explain what that means, please? Sure. So um, what the board is approving is essentially a, it's a, a non-conforming uh, structure on the property. Uh, that and that will transfer with the land as it goes forward. And so a part of the application process, once the board has a, issued um, a special permit, the 
that special permit needs to be filed with the registry of deeds so that it becomes a permanent record for the property because otherwise somebody in the future could say you know be like well, why is this here and you can't find a record of it right so right it's just it's a it's a required step um, at the very end of the application process and who would take care of that uh so that would be yourself uh, but the zone the um I'm sure inspectional services could let you know what's required. Okay, it's called special services. And, and... It's inspectional services, so the building department. Inspectional services, okay. Yeah. Thank you. That's a good, good, great idea. <laughs> Update the deed. Yeah. Uh, so unless so the what the board has um, for this site, it's a request for a special permit and a section uh, six finding of not substantially more detrimental in regard to the increasing the width of the driveway. Um, there's a re recommendation for three uh, standard conditions plus two additional conditions, one regarding permeable paving and the other regarding the, the plot plan for the registry of deeds. Um, are there any concerns from the board in regards to uh, this application? Seeing none, the chair will take a motion to close the public hearing for docket 380340 Sutherland Road. Mr. Mr. Chairman, so moved, but before we go to a second, I just want to make it yep. clear that the uh, I'll end up expect to uh, prepare the decision here. And as was true with the earlier case, my it is my intention to prepare a decision approving this application with the conditions that uh, that the chairman has read into the record. Second. Thank you, Thank you Mr. DuPont. So roll call vote of the board to uh, close the public hearing for docket 3803, number 40 Sutherland Road. Mr. DuPont? Aye. Mr. Hanlon? Aye. Mr. Riccadelli? Aye. Ms. Hoffman? Aye. Mr. LeBlanc? Aye. And the chair votes aye. We are closed on 40 Sutherland Road. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, everyone. Appreciate it. Thank you. You too. Um, then going back to our agenda, this brings us up to item number six on our docket 3804-322 Mystic Street. Um, if I could go ahead and ask the applicant to introduce themselves and tell us what they would like to do, and I will go ahead and uh, bring up the site plan. Oh, you're on mute. Sorry. Hello, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, my name is Ravindra, um, and I recently purchased this property through HUD, and we are uh, renovating the house. Um, everything else is fine. It's just a driveway. Uh, probably everyone knows what the situation is there. Every time you, uh, it's a really short and a, a very steep driveway. And uh, uh, Mystic uh, Street is really like a, a very high volume traffic and there's no parking on the street. So every time you try to pull into the driveway, it's a life or death situation there because, you know, um, as soon as you turn in, then you have to, because the drive is so short that you really have to like a, uh, like a, a very abruptly stop. And also, every time we try to uh, back up uh, to like uh, get out, uh, you have to really uh, like uh, uh, see what's coming because they are traveling in a very high speed. So basically, it's like a um, you know a safety hazard issue, and uh, you know there is not much uh, we can do because it's it's a lot of ledge there, and also. Um, the driveway is very steep, like, uh, uh, so, uh, you know, we are uh, requesting that on the side of the house, um, uh, that driveway to continue so that at least we have some kind of a leeway there, um, uh, basically to park the car or even uh, just to like a turn around or do something 
any anything wider than what we have there is going to give us a good like a visual of the street also and yeah that's what we are looking for okay um so the the reason that this application is before us uh so this is listed as a variance under 6110a uh, so the width of a driveway is limited to 20 feet. And um, obviously the width here would be significantly wider than 20 feet. So that's the that's the reason that this application is before the board. Um, so I had, uh, so you had noted in your application that you were concerned about the safety of coming in and out on Mystic Street. Um, I did contact uh, the police department and asked for records of... Um, any accidents on this stretch of Mystic Street, uh, they had responded that there were two um, two accidents reported on the on Mystic Street over the course of the last three years that involved um, a driver falling asleep and hitting a telephone pole. And there was a third where a driver struck a telephone pole after avoiding an animal. Uh, but there have been no reported accidents in regards to um, entering or exiting any of the properties on Mystic Street. So I just wanted to um, provide that information for the board. Um, could you explain how the proposed drive going up the side of the house is going to improve the safety condition? Um, it will, like I said, it will, on the side of the um, house where there is a lot of bushes and stuff, uh, that we can just clear out a little bit and have a retaining wall, uh, which will give us like a better um, vi uh, visual on the road while backing off. And uh, when you when you said that there, there hasn't been much uh, accident, that's probably because most of the houses that are there, either they already have wider driveway, like they did the pavers on the side or they did a wider car parts, or most of them have like a horseshoe a driveway there, which, mm -hmm. which is like significantly they can turn around. And this particular house, if you even go, just for me to go there, I really have to remember where the house is and turn the side light on from like two, 300 um, feet before. And also, I uh, still I get tailgated. Like almost feels like when a time to turn inside uh, feels like uh, somebody's gonna hit me every time. And uh, when you get out from there, it's it's a uh, worse situation because then you don't see anything. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, this is uh, something like just because it's so steep there. Um, so I'm uh, sorry, maybe I I. Um, forgot what was your original question no nope, no i think that that's response to the question so there's um an existing two car garage under the house is that remaining that's not two car garage what happened was or uh, probably at some point was but then um because the house is sitting on the uh, ledge so they had to do some kind of a bench walls so uh, all around the perimeter of the garage, so it became narrow and na narrower. So we, when we got there, we had to do some too because we uh, uh, um, to protect the foundation. So it's it's like uh, the door is going to be 16 feet, but inside is is much smaller. So one car will fit there barely. Oh, okay. But you're not removing the driveway. I mean, sorry, the the whatever parking is there in the garage. No, um, that's going to stay. But I had when I visited the site, I noted you had um, sort of cleared it off on the side to put the construction dumpster in. Um, <laughs> was that beforehand? Was that area landscaped to the side of the driveway? It was in a really, really uh, rough uh, situation there. Um, there was no grass. There was uh, one tree there's very small, like a, I think it was a Japanese maple tree, mm -hmm. but it was uh, not really in a good condition. No one had taken care of the property, basically. 
Okay. So when we got there uh, to do the construction work, like, uh, you know, uh, we had to put dumpster somewhere. So I figured maybe if we do that, uh, then we can have a little bit of space, uh, workable space there. And uh, we can uh, uh, pull over like a, one or two cars, uh, construction vehicles, so that we are not obstructing the street. Uh, mm -hmm. We try to just uh, um, uh, be a little bit uh, safer uh, than, uh, you know, uh, taking chances. So, mm -hmm. yes. So would you be, so at the front of the property, there's an existing retaining wall that's like three feet high um, along right. the edge of the sidewalk that turns into the driveway is, I, I, I'm having trouble just from the site plan to the way it's it's drawn. Is the intention to remove it? Or... That has been removed already. Okay. Yeah, that turn. Otherwise, the dumpster couldn't go inside. So, yep. And so, is the I so would it be so the curved red line here? Yeah. Is, is the land sort of in that triangular wedge? Is that higher than the? Yeah, it's it's a little line? higher there. That's the only corner. Actually, to tell you the truth, if if I can have like maybe six foot of a curb removed from there. That will make sense more, but then uh, you know I didn't know uh, how much should I ask for, so I I was very hesitant to say. So I said, okay, maybe uh, we'll keep that uh, curb a as it is, and we'll just turn the car, uh, you know, have have that space make a little wider. So okay. I I just didn't want it to uh, overwhelm asking for something, you know. I just wanted to do after like. I'm allowed. So, I mean, uh, you know, if that curb can be removed, that would be really good. Okay. And then you're saying that the, the garage space itself, is it, it is it that it's not deep enough to be parking or? No, the width wise. Width. The, yeah. It was you know, from before was like a just a door was 16 footer. But uh, when you have a 16 foot door, you should have like a foot or two on the side so that when you open the door, you have space. So right. if it is exactly 16, then uh, it's not really you can fit a two car. But then uh, we had to put uh, build more bench walls to protect the foundations. So um, that was uh, we discussed with the building department, and they, uh, you know, the, the structural engineer said, like, if you do like this, then uh, your building is going to be uh, protected better. So we had to do like eight inch wall all around the perimeter. So now it's uh, more small. Oh, okay. So let's go quickly. So this is the. The street view in Google. So you're so where the concrete is here below the brick. You're saying there's now this comes out eight inches in order right. to buttress the buttress the foundation wall. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, and then that's the garage. The Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mr. Hanlon. It's a question that I was going to ask in a minute, but I but I really want to do it while this picture is up because it's the same thing that I kind of looked at when I was out there. I did not detect, I mean, there is a, there is some slope down and I think that there's been some work on it that's been done in the meantime. When I drove by, it did not look all that steep. And I was wondering if, 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 since this has been changed, if, if there had been some grading work on it, done on it, uh, uh -huh. but some quantification of just what this, what this steepness is. Yes, sir. Can yes, I please. say something? Yes, please. Um, yeah. So, uh, yes, uh, that's true. So what we did was uh, uh, we dropped the garage slab just a tiny bit so that we can grid uh, to make it more safer. But still, it's it's like a, it's, it's still very steep. Hello? Yep. Nope. Oh, I'm just sorry. writing. Sorry, just writing notes. <laughs> no, I, I thought like I lost you. So, so, Mr. Chair, could I ask a follow up question on that? Yes, please. So, um, so uh, you've lowered the garage slab a little bit to grade off the driveway, but the intent of this proposal 
is to keep uh, so sort of to the right of the garage where we're seeing where the new proposed driver would be, the grade would be uh, the existing grade, uh, basically paved, but on that steep slope, or are you, are you also proposing to level it out? No, it, uh, sorry, we we dropped that uh, area also just a little bit, graded a little bit so that we could boost the dumpster up. So okay. uh, even for now, so it's it's going to match the whole grade. We cannot lower too much because it's a lot of uh, ledge there. So there's no uh, way we could do that. Um, we'll do the best we can, uh, grade it really nicely. And then um, uh, that's what we were trying to do. Okay, so it is from the from the photo we looked at. It is um, not as steep as it was originally. Right. Okay, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Dupont. So, in looking up and down the street, I I realize it may be a bit steeper, at least in that photo, than some of the other properties on the street, but it's not significant. I think they all sort of share the same configuration and row that row of houses. So that's one issue. And I do realize that somebody to the immediate right of that property has put pavers in and really expanded the area uh, of what would be the driveway, probably beyond the 20 feet. But my question is, what's the actual existing width of the driveway? as because I can't tell from the plan what it is. I know what they're looking to expand to, mm -hmm. but I'm wondering if just going to the 20 feet gives enough room to make, you know, a three point turn if you need to do so. And if you're if you're pulled in front ways and you need to back out and you have a little bit more room as opposed to looking for a variance, because you know we've discussed this tonight and looking at the conditions for variance that you know have to do with lot shape topography or soil condition that are different than other houses in the district i just don't see the difference unless there's something i'm missing mm -hmm. so it just leads me to question you know what about 20 feet is there enough there uh, if you just make it 20 feet i have no idea what the existing is but the width Right. Um, let's see if I can figure this out here. Right now, it appears Looks now to but probably seventeen feet, maybe. Just scaling the drawing that's here. Uh, I I believe uh, it was 20, uh, 20 feet before. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I believe it was because the car cut was twenty four, so uh, it was a little bit uh, narrower than a uh, curve. So I, I believe it was twenty feet. Uh, the thing is, uh, Mystic Street doesn't have a, like a on-street parking. So um, basically, we have like uh, right now uh, three parking, one in the garage and two outside. Mm -hmm. Let's say a third car came, they have nowhere to go. Um, uh, there is no uh, side street nearby to park there and walk. There is like, but there is like a five, six houses down other side. And uh, I don't even know like if uh, um, it's okay to park there. And one is across the street. So you have to really have to cross the street every time you park on somebody else's road, right? So, um, yeah, the the additional park on the uh, parking on the side will give. It's it's not. I'm not looking for a privilege or any comfortness. It's just a, out of necessity. Um, there is like a, if there is like a two or three people came to visit, then they have nowhere to park. So just trying to uh, be a little bit, uh, uh, you know, um, what's the word? Um, in a 
safe situation, then like every time um, have to uh, put on a hazard light and a park over there or something like that. Yeah. So is there, is there really no parking allowed on Mystic Street? It's a, it's a highway, so. Oh, I see. Okay. As I say, I don't, there's no signs. Probably you shouldn't even park there for a couple of minutes because uh, it's really dangerous getting out of the car when cars are coming from behind. That's what I had to do. <laughs> so you know. Okay. I think you um, can park on Beverly Street across the street. Right. Are there other questions or comments from the board? Seeing none, I'm going to go ahead and open the hearing for public comment. Um, as I said before, the board takes public comment as it relates to the matter at hand and should be directed to the board for the purpose of helping inform our decision. Uh, you can digitally raise your hand using the raise hand feature in the Zoom. If you're calling in, you may dial star nine to be called upon by the chair and asked for your questions and comments. With that, uh, we have a raised hand from Mr. Moore. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, Steve Moore, Piedmont Street. I, uh, I know that you all missed my comments uh, when I was not able to join you <laughs> earlier, so I figured I would just jump in now. There you uh, go. We missed you on Washington Street. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it looked like the, there were a lot of interesting earlier cases. Uh, I guess I would um, uh, I would ask, is the applicant planning, and I think this gets to where Mr. Riccadelli was going, is the driveway being proposed next to the house going to be built into the slope or at the slope? Because they will have two very different looks depending on what the choice is. I guess there's a dumpster there now, but... Uh, what is the intent of the applicant? Uh, if you could go ahead and explain. That question for me? Yep, that's a question for you. Sid. Oh, you okay. Explain a little bit about the topography. Yeah, sure. So uh, we we will be just matching the uh, driveway uh, slope and that uh, side hill uh, to the same slope. We'll just follow the contour, and we'll. Uh, I'm thinking to either like a, use a paver, or, or uh, asphalt to pave it. Okay, Mr. Chair. What that what that says to me, though I I think I understand what was said, uh, is that they'll have to be removing a great deal of uh, of uh, fill that's there right now to match the driveway against. Mm -hmm what is now held back by a retaining wall or maybe has been dug out for a dumpster. I'm not quite sure which. Um, so it sounds like it's built into the slope. Um, my first question would be, does that undermine the wall that is being built next to, number one? Number two, how close are those very large trees that are on the neighbor's property immediately to the right to this construction? That, that's my question. Uh, sorry, is that to me? Yes, sir. Oh, sorry. This is my first time. So, yeah, no, um, no. yeah so uh, there is a uh, small bushes, which is on the neighbor's property, uh, and uh, there is no major tree. There is one tree uh, right near the uh, street, but uh, that is also maybe six, seven feet like uh, uh, on their property, which is not ours. So uh, when you say like a, a significant amount of uh, soil that need to be removed, um, we just uh, followed the contour that so uh, it's not much like, uh, you know, we are not undermining the house or anything mm -hmm. like that. Okay. So when, uh, when you come up with the uh, uh, pavers, it, uh, we are still above the, uh, uh, like a, uh, house foundation. So we are not undermining the house there. Okay, Mr. Chair, that I, I see that does that does make sense. Thanks for putting that picture back up. Um, I don't the, the trees that I'm looking at look to be pretty close to the property line, not six feet out. And I'm wondering 
would this construction undermine that very large tree? Because my guess is it might. You're not supposed to disturb soil and the critical root zone of such a large tree. It's hard to tell what its diameter is of your neighbor's tree there, but it, the, the critical root zone, it's an inch per, uh, one foot per inch of uh, diameter breast height. So if that tree is maybe 10 inches across, uh, you would need some odd 10 feet out from the side that you you would have to protect the critical root zone of those neighboring trees, but you're planning to be digging this out some might, I guess. Um, they, uh, when when we remove some of the soil, we never like uh, maybe either the uh, tree roots are deep or there is none towards this side because we haven't encountered any obstruction or anything like that. And also that tree, that uh, whole thing is is uh, tilting towards the house, so it's it's not really neighbor's issue, but probably it's it's ours. Uh, you know, uh, if it causes any like a safety issue to the house, just because it's tilting towards the house, uh, maybe need to do something about it. Uh, well, I understand that the, the issue related to a safety concern, but. That would be for you and your neighbor to to work out. I would I would think. Um, I I guess my I, I assume this house was recently purchased and it was purchased with all of these conditions already existing, and purchased as as was. Uh, and now we're asking to change them and asking for a variance of of what is a standard driveway width maximum to to do this accommodation and i just uh, am am wondering why furthering you know or, or adding to a nonconformity or adding a nonconformity is uh is okay to go with necessarily when it was sort of known that these were limitations of the property when you bought it When, when we uh, bought the house, uh, we knew that uh, it was in a really uh, uh, rough situation, but then uh, it was in a really nice neighborhood, uh, really nice uh, uh, family neighborhood and all that. So uh, there had to be a little bit of a something like to make it more safer had to be done. Uh, you know, if you look at the current picture, uh, that even though that that driveway was 20 foot uh, wide, uh, if you pull one car, then you wouldn't be able to fit another because both sides were where the walls. So uh, all you had was one parking inside and one parking outside. So when you have a uh, couple of friends or families came over, you, you really didn't have anything. It was uh, like a, no parking at all. So uh, every time you uh, pull on the side of the street, um, it's it's creating uh, like a dangerous situation to uh, other people, to yourself. And uh, if you pull over there for a couple of minutes, you will find out it's it's not really a good situation there. So um, yes, I I knew there had something had to be done. That's why we had to go through variance. And uh, I'm requesting like, uh, you know, this is what we are planning to do. This is what we are doing. And it will just make things better, better for uh, everyone. Okay, well, Mr. Chair, I understand. I I, uh, I just, I'm never a fan of, of putting trees in danger for convenience and, and also adding less permeable though i guess it's still permeable pavers it's certainly less than than uh, than open dirt thank you mr chair thank you mr martin are there any other members of the public who wish to address this hearing seeing none i'll go ahead and close public comment for this hearing uh so what the board has before it this is a, an application for a variance um because the driveway is as it is today is compliant at a 20 foot or less than 20 feet in width um leading to parking uh under the house and the request is to widen that um to approximately 34 feet um 
So uh, that would uh, require uh, almost 35 feet. So that would require a variance for the additional width. Um, so as we had noted on an earlier hearing, uh, variances are uh, controlled by Chapter 40A, Section 10 of the Mass General Laws. And it requires that the Zoning Board of Appeals must find that all four criteria are met in order to be authorized to grant a variance. If any one of the standards are not met, the board is not allowed to grant a variance. Uh, so the four criteria, the first is to describe the circumstances related to soil condition, shape, or topography, especially affecting such land or structures, but not affecting generally the zoning district in which it's located. It would substantiate the granting of a variance. Second is describe how the literal enforcement of the provisions of the zoning bylaw specifically related to the circumstances affecting the land or structures noted above would involve substantial hardship, financial or otherwise, to the petitioner or the applicant. Uh, third is describe how desirable relief may be granted without substantial detriment to the public good. And the fourth is describe how desirable relief may be granted without nullifying or substantially derogating from the intent or purpose of the zoning bylaw of the town of Arlington. Um, so I would uh, to return to the applicant and sort of, so the, the first criteria is to describe the circumstances related to the soil conditions. So something about the soils of the site, uh, the shape, the shape of the lot or the topography. So the, the slopes or whatnot especially affecting this property or structure, but not generally affecting the zoning district. Um, so if, could you sort of explain to us what it what is sort of unique about this property that does not apply to the other properties around it? Um, so uh, what, is it, what I can tell you is uh, the neighboring houses don't have this kind of contour. They, they do, but uh, it's much lesser than uh, our house is, is uh, the driveway and uh, the house is uh, more on a steeper hill than any others on this uh, area. Uh, one in the left is kind of like a little similar, but then it's gradually uh, goes like a, uh, the hill goes like a, more like a smaller and smaller on that side and same with on the right hand side so somehow that point is at the highest point and um that is that and uh all other neighborhood uh, like a uh, you know the neighbor's driveway uh they although they have a flat driveway they they either have a, a like a horseshoe um uh, driveway or uh they have like a larger car cars when I asked the building department uh, why they had that, they told uh, me that uh, it was done without the permit. So um, that I was told that, um, but you know, I, I wanna go through proper process and a proper thing to do, right thing to do. That's why I, I, uh, I'm here today. Mm -hmm. So. Um, yeah, so sort of as the board, sort of what their sense is, um, I mean, certainly the soil, there's no specific soil condition here. There's no, you know, the applicant has noted that there is ledge under the house, which has impacted the, the size of the garage under the house. Um, but the, but there is still um, the provision of, the, of a single uh, parking space, which is uh, what's required under the bylaw. Um, that there's the shape of the lot is essentially rectangular um, and similar to other houses on this side of oh, up and down Mystic. Uh, but there has been uh, the statement that this site is um, has additional topography in relation to the houses on the other side, um, which is creating the the hardship that uh, he's trying to resolve by widening the driveway. Um, and, you know, I appreciate his comment about the, um, you know, houses on adjacent lots uh, 
and and the uh, the illegal parking spaces, the the unpermitted parking spaces. Um, I do greatly appreciate him coming before the board to do this properly. Um, but I would ask the board what their sense is about whether we can make a finding in relation to the first criteria that there is something, there's a circumstance that is specific to this site, but not to the district in general. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Hanlon. Um, I mean, I think it's all a matter of degree and that to some extent that the changes that have been made in the project since some of the pictures were taken have addressed some of the problem. I'm inclined to agree with Mr. DuPont that it's that it, at most it's a matter of degree. It doesn't seem to me to be very different from all of the other places that essentially share the same the same retaining wall. Um, I do think that in dealing with this, you can't deal in dealing with the issue of soil sh uh, slope shape and topography. You have to say what is the hardship that they relate to. Um, if the question is, is it really creating an unsafe condition? I, I mean, everybody can disagree about that, but on the basis of going there and I drive along this area constantly, I do not believe actually that there's any safety issue at all. Uh, when I move, when I turned around in other, uh, at other houses, it's perfectly easy to back out. I understand that Mystic gets to be busy sometimes, but uh, that's a problem that everybody who lives on Mystic has to deal with. Uh, and I don't really see how the changes that are proposed would significantly alleviate a safety problem if that were really what the hardship was. I think the hardship here is really simpler than that. I think it's that you just can't get as, as many parking spaces onto the property as the applicant would like to have. He was quite forthright in saying that you no, know, you, you. If he has guests, he has a party. There's no place for the people to park because there's not the room to park on site. And it's that that's really what the problem is. Is that doing this allows at least some guest parking, and some parking beyond the minimum, and even beyond the minimum plus one. So in this respect, it's quite different from the first case that uh, that we heard, where the problem was that there were you could get too many cars on the site. This time, it's really too small. Um, I just don't know that it seems to me that 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 is potentially shareable. I mean, that's really a product of there not being much space. I don't think that's a primarily a product of the topography. Uh, and I'm not sure once you've got a couple of parking spaces on there, I'm not sure that it's a hardship that you can't get one or two more. Well, thank you, Mr. Hamlin. I mean, when I, when I look at the site, I'm, I, when I had first looked at the application, um, I was concerned that I don't think it meets the first criteria because I don't see the site as being, um, you know, having specific circumstances that are unique to this site that are not generally affecting the zoning district um, because I see this as a you know, a long run of buildings um, along Mystic that are all sort of in the same boat. Um, and while I appreciate that the you know, the applicant is, um, you know, is concerned about the safety and is trying to, uh, you know, forestall any issues in regards to there not being enough parking uh, should there be guests at the property? Um, I'm not sure that I see this site as being um, one where a variance would be appropriate, um, especially because there's nothing in particular about the issues with the site that directly lead to the need for additional parking spaces. That it, that's just a function of the street it's on. And there are lots of streets that have different parking restrictions. Um, 
and I just don't see that as being uh, the, the the addition of parking is I don't see that as being related to any of the site any of the issues that potentially may exist with the site. But I would welcome being dissuaded. I could possibly see having like a dog leg out to the side where if somebody was to drive into the driveway straight, park in the garage, they could back out and do a three point turn. So they're facing straight coming out of the Mystic Street like that would address the, the concern about the, the safety of the site. Um, but again, I'm not sure there is. anything a particular about this site that would rise to the level of a variance um when uh when uh when i say about like it's not uh like uh, similar to other properties is because this one has a very short uh driveway and it, just because it's a steep uh, slope um other uh, other houses in the nearby they they also maybe a little bit Either they have longer driveway or may, maybe they have uh, flat uh, land. So um, just being on the slope, uh, even in the winter time, even uh, forget about the parking, right? When when you walk there, probably you're gonna just slip and fall too. Uh, it's it's that kind of situation. So if you try to pull over the car like really abruptly, if if you if you have nowhere to go. What I was thinking was like, if you could go to the right, just park your car, leave the uh, front uh, uh, driveway for the uh, car to go in the garage. So every time uh, when you're trying to uh, take one car out from the garage, just because the, uh, one car has to be inside the garage. So mm -hmm. to move that car, is there is nowhere else that you can just uh, maneuver to, uh, to you, know, you just have to come back outside to the Mystic Street, which is a highway. So you can park your car, you can leave your car for two minutes. So it's really, really tight situation there and, and a, sl a slope doesn't help. So uh, that's the situation there. Other opinions from the board? Mr. Chair? Mr. LeBlanc? Um, I'm kind of falling behind what other members of the board have been saying that um, I don't think the condition here is significantly different than other buildings on along this side of, the, of Mystic Street, um, that it's a pretty prevalent condition along these these rows of houses and um you know i kind of generally agree that i think really what this is getting a little bit about is just adding more parking to uh to the site and i'm just a little bit concerned about um adding more parking in general i think it's starting to get against um some of the goals of the town in general um you know as a town we're trying to not add vehicles, I think, as, as an overall town goal. Um, so I just want us to be cognizant of that as well as we start to see a lot more of these types of um, special permits or variances in front of us. The chairman, I have a question for you. Mr. Hanlon. Um, I want to go back to the question. I, it's not completely clear that this is feasible to do, um, but there really are two parts to the applicant's application. One of it is just ex ex putting more width in the driveway that is that is to the front, uh, and the other is adding a whole new 
parking space on the side yard. Um, and the question I have is whether it would be feasible if the issue is to provide for an ease of turning around and is and and is not uh, to squeezing in another parking space. Is there enough room there to do that by putting in a turning around? That may require help from us, um, but at least it would be, in some ways, it would make me feel a little bit happier to know that I'm dealing with a genuine safety situation and being able to facilitate people getting in and out of the site. That seems to me a more compelling issue than getting one or, you know, getting as many much parking on the site as you can. Mm -hmm. But I don't really know if that works. There's 14.8 feet that's between the existing building and I assume it's the retaining wall. Uh, I don't know if there's enough room to put a turnaround in the, in that kind of a space or not. But it would be 35 feet from the opposite side of the driveway. Right. So, I mean, I... I would think there would be space to do, you know, if you were doing it, if you had a T, you just have the leg of the T going towards the property line so that you pull straight into the drive in front of the garage. And then if you needed to turn around, you could pull, you could back into that pull out and then pull forward. So you're coming out onto Mystic Street driving straight. Um, and that would allow for some increase in safety, but would not be, you know, creating additional parking spaces up the side of the house. No, I was just thinking that if we, if the hardship is basically that it's not safe enough, and I know that I there's, there the question about safety is something on which the evidence is not tremendously strong, but if you really thought intuitively that the issue was safety and that that was enough of a hardship and related enough to mm -hmm. to what the applicant would like to do, um, to, to do that, that would be a solution that I would feel more comfortable dealing with uh, and a problem I'd feel more comfortable dealing with uh, than with just the general amount of parking on the site. But unfortunately, none of that gets to the question of the first test as to whether or not this property qualifies for the issue of a variance. When I drove up and down Mystic today. I stopped by the house today. Just... don't get the sense that there's something you there's something different about this property um you know other properties have driveways that have slopes some of them are steeper some of them are not as steep some houses are closer some houses are farther away um the house uh, I'm sorry. Today. Nope, go right ahead. Yeah. Um uh the house uh next to uh my house is uh significantly smaller in size, but they had they did like uh, the same thing, um uh like uh, they, they did the pavers on the side so that they can turn around. I don't mm -hmm. know how they did it, but they they have so all all the houses have more parkings than just just two parkings. So um Just because the size of the house is a little bigger, uh, and you know it's, um, uh, and the others have more parkings. So um, I just want to be more like a safer while mm -hmm. when pulling in and out. Like a, I, I, I'm pretty sure when you went there, uh, it it wasn't like a pulling into a like a regular house. It's 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 kind of scary to. Uh, I'm not exaggerating because I go there every day, mm -hmm. so I I know what I'm what I'm saying. 
So uh, yeah, that's the, the request I want to make is is you know just just uh, otherwise spending uh, that kind of money for uh, just to have like one more car in there it doesn't make sense. So um, I just want to make it safer so that uh, in future the kids uh, coming out or driving out or somebody pulling in. Uh, whatever. If it's like a little bit wider, you'll have a better vision of the street and all all those kind of things. It will uh, definitely make it a lot more safer. Uh, so I've turned to other members of the board, like the the state law. doesn't start from that point the state law starts from there has to be something about the soil condition shape or topography of this particular piece of land that does not generally affect the board the the district so the the question back before the board is you know does this property meet that criteria um and the you know the benefit the potential benefit of the work that is being proposed unfortunately is not doesn't come in until we've gotten past this question um mr chair mr riccadelli i i would you know echo what the other board members mentioned before i i i don't think for me it it does meet that threshold um because you know i, I drive down the street you know every other day and uh there's many many of these similar conditions down Mystic Street. Um, you know, I understand what the applicant is is commenting on and the safety. It, it sometimes can be, people can drive kind of fast there, but I don't think we even need to broach the topic if we can't get by the first uh, criterion, so. All right, so how to proceed at this point? Um, so we could do, so in the past when we have done variance cases, we've done a straw poll on the questions. Um, and so the, we could do, do that as well. Um, and if we agree on all four, with a positive result for all four questions, then we can um, proceed to discussion of conditions um, for the application. But I, unless there's an objection from the board, I think we really need to just uh, do a straw poll for how we feel about these four questions and see if we have enough positive votes in order to um, to proceed to the to a decision on a variance, or if we don't meet the criteria, if we don't feel that the project meets the criteria, then we will um, need to prepare a decision um, to deny the the variance application. Mr. Um, Chairman, Mr. Hanlon, could I suggest that we? I mean, given the discussion that we've had, we haven't really talked about the third and fourth conditions at all, and we've talked. A little bit about the second one, but that only relates, but only in relationship to the first. And I have the sense that if we take a straw discussion or straw vote or whatever on the first, we'll find that it's dispositive of the whole. Um, and I suggest that we do that. And if it's clear that there's not enough support on the board for the notion that it meets the first condition, that uh, that we end it there and not spend the rest of the evening dealing with the others when the first one is dispositive. It has to meet that or it can't be granted. Okay. So with that, um, I would do a, a roll, I guess the best way to do this is a roll call vote of the board is what we've done in the past. Um, on these criteria. So 
uh, in regards to 322 Mystic Street, the first condition that is required for a special permit would be um, a finding that the circumstances relating to the soil conditions, shape, or topography, especially affecting such land or structures, but not affecting generally the zoning district in which it is located, that would substantiate the granting of a variance. So um, if you feel that that, uh, fi that the finding has been met, um, then the vote would be yes. And if you feel that that uh, has not been met, then the vote would be no. Um, so I will do a vote of um, the members of the board. So we'll do a we'll do a vote of everybody, um, because this is just getting a sense of the board. So with that, um, so in regards to whether the first circuit the first criteria has been met, uh, Mr. Dupont, uh, no. Mr. Hanlon, no. Mr. Riccadelli, no. Ms. Hoffman, no. Mr. LeBlanc, no. And the chair says no. Uh, so with that, the first criteria for the variance is not met. Um, and as a, the, a positive vote is required for all four, uh, the board um, is not authorized to grant a variance uh, on this application. Um, so the or, so the step next step for the board, we would vote uh, hold a vote to close the public hearing for this docket. Uh, we would then prepare a decision um, based on uh, the inability to move forward with the variance, and then uh, that would be voted on as the decision of the board at our um, hearing on July 9th. So with that, the chair will accept a motion to close the public hearing uh, for docket 3804, 322 Mystic Street. So moved. Thanks, Second. Mr. Hanlon. Thank you, Mr. DuPont. So a uh, vote of the board to close the public hearing. Mr. DuPont? Aye. Mr. Hanlon? Aye. Mr. Riccadelli? Aye. Hoffman? Aye. Mr. LeBlanc? Aye. And the chair votes aye. So the public hearing for... Uh, 322 Mystic Street is closed. Uh, appreciate the applicant coming before us, uh, sticking with us through this late evening. Um, I'm, I'm sorry that it does not appear to be better news. No worries. Uh, <laughs> it is what it is. And uh, thank you very much for everyone. Hopefully, uh, there won't be any accident so that there will be third accident soon. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank, thank you, you so much. much. Thank you. All right, so that is the end of the public hearings for tonight. Um, as we've said a couple of times, our next hearing is July 9th. Um, we did continue um, a couple of items to that. One was the Washington <clears throat> and uh, one was uh, 232 Mass Ave. Um, Colleen, what is July 9th looking like at this point? Colleen, still with us? Oh, she may have had to step away. No, I, I was trying to call. I wasn't unmuting. Sorry. <laughs> um, I was trying to read off the Novus thing. Um, so we have the two that we continued for tonight. And then um, 109 Wright Street, which I believe is a um, addition. And 39 okay. Amherst. And I think they're both additions of some sort with um, non-conformance. Okay. They're both special permits? Yes. Excellent. And nothing else. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. And you had said before that for July 23rd, you were thinking there were a couple that were under consideration, but they hadn't been assigned yet. That is correct. There's two of them that um, I have till next week to send out their legal notices. So if they're good to go, then we'll send them out. Okay. Perfect. Um, so I will uh, 
talk to Colleen tomorrow about setting up a date and time to go visit uh, Washington Street. Um, with it being a little bit lighter later in the day, uh, would it be easier for folks to make an early evening? Um, like around six o'clock, would that sort of make help people? I know that during the day is often difficult for some folks. Thursday would be impossible for me at six. Otherwise, evenings are harder actually for me than the daytime. But uh, but I could probably make six on other nights, but not that one. Would people be able to make like five, or is that cutting it close? Are we talking this Thursday? I'm flexible. <laughs> so I don't know what date, but just sort of in general, would people be able to make a five o'clock work? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Christian, I'm assuming it'll be next week if he has to do a drawing and um, other stuff, right? Or do you think it'll be this week? Yeah, I think it'll probably be next week. Um, In which case, Wednesday is the fourth week. Um, oh, so we're going for his barbecue. On the <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> So I I would be aiming for two for next Tuesday at five if that's a possibility. Second. Yeah. I think that would work for me. Okay. So Colleen, if you don't mind just reaching out to them and seeing if that <laughs> works for them. Okay. Great. Yep. Thank. You. Thank you. And with that. Unless there's anything else, I would like to thank you all for your participation in tonight's meeting of the Arlington Zoning Board of Appeals. Appreciate everyone's patience throughout this long meeting. I would especially like to thank Colleen Ralston, Mike Champa, for their assistance in preparing for and hosting our online meeting. Please note the purpose of the board's recording of the meeting is to ensure the creation of an accurate record of our proceedings. It is of our understanding that recordings made by ACMI will be available on demand at acmi.tv within the coming days. If anyone has comments or recommendations, please send them via email to zba at town.arlington.ma.us. That email address is also listed on the Zoning Board of Appeals website. And to conclude tonight's meeting, I would ask for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Thank you, Thank you, Mr. Du DuPont. So roll call vote of the board to adjourn. Mr. DuPont. Aye. Mr. Hanlon. Aye. Mr. Riccadelli. Aye. Ms. Hoffman. Aye. Mr. LeBlanc. Aye. Chair votes aye. We are adjourned. ACMI productions are only made possible with your support. Visit patreon.com slash ACMI to learn how you can help.